Hey, how's it going? Not bad. Yourself? Pretty good. Uh, good to see you, Matt. Uh, by the way, our thing tomorrow is double book because we're doing a rally at 530 at Young and Dundas. Wow. Uh, although we could do a live recording there at Young and Dundas. How far from the center are you? <sighs> Where's the center? No, I mean, like, how far are you from Young and Dundas? I live in Ward 1. Oh, that's far. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we can rejigger. There's other possibilities, but I thought I'd let you know that we have to adjust that somehow. I just finished making a bunch of other stuff. I made it all having a launch party this Wednesday. That's awesome. Well, I figured I better hurry up because one of my competitors had their launch party on Saturday. I was like, what? You're partying. I was just <laughs> partying with my wife. I got a party with my like future constituents. <laughs> hey, before this, this gets started, uh, do you know who this uh, George, uh, what's his name, Swasson? Or... Uh, uh, I, well, he, you know what? I should message him to come to this right now. He's quite the crank, but he's interested to talk to you. This is started in the sense that this is all very informal. Um, it's all being recorded and uploaded so that we produce content. But, you know, um, I'm an anarchist in like a, in like a gradual kind of way in the sense that I only introduce rules as necessary. So as far as I'm concerned, there are no rules. Um, except the rules inherent in the Zoom software, which probably does allow me to mute people and whatnot, but um, <laughs> the light touch. <laughs> and so basically, this is free, freely structured. I'm glad that there's some very structured debates, and Matt, you're very good at that. Um, my uh, my forte is the really unstructured stuff, which is something I experimented with for years at UP. So um, it causes some people anxiety because they don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> but, you know, uh, rising. Uh, Peter, is your audio working? <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the yeah. wall needs, needs to connect. Yeah. Um, everybody should take should record their own copy. That way, no one of us can delete the copy and say, oh, that didn't happen. <laughs> and and you're all encouraged in general. This is gonna be a weekly thing, Socialist Town Hall. Everyone is encouraged to upload their copy to their channels. So you can upload it to your own YouTube. Oh, here, here's a green NFT. Someone I met campaigning on IRC. I'm the only candidate with sheet music and the only candidate on IRC that I'm aware. <laughs> I just like uh, flooded the music faculty building with copies of the score to evict John Tory today. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes over. And yeah, I'm gonna message George actually on Twitter because uh, this is just round one. There's lots of folks we probably should have invited actually to this conversation and hopefully they'll get looped in next week. And it'll also give us a week to practice maybe with a smaller size, but hopefully this would be actually a very large Zoom meeting and uh, maybe even more chaotic than the municipal mayhem show I want to do with just a few people. But, you know, then I guess it's two people vying for the, the center uh, of attention or something like that sometimes. So, let me look up George here. George ran against Mike Layton in the past. And uh, I don't think he's a socialist, but uh, he's, he's willing to talk to me, who's currently presenting as a socialist. It's really ambiguous, right? Uh, I was at this um, uh, event, a uh, reception for basically like an NDP aligned charity. And this guy there was telling me and Peter, who's here right here, that, uh, oh, we're going to screw ourselves basically using socialism as a brand. He's like, I want you to win. And I like socialism, but I don't want you to call it socialism because then you won't actually get to do socialism. Which is, you know, this is how Richard Wolff thinks in America, where the prejudice is even worse. He says, like, oh, you have to call it democracy at work because democracy is sacred and socialism is a sullied term for Americans. But anyway, we were getting told, uh, oh, don't identify that way. You're going to, you yeah, know. But you can't call a party democracy at work. I mean, yeah. But, what did you say, Peter? Yeah, you can't call a party. You have to call a party something, right? I mean, so. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, progressive uh, alliance. So, democracy at work. Socialism entails democracy at work. So, but, uh, right. Zoom the link. I should send to George. I should send to our little chats here. So everybody is looped in who's, uh, you know, paying attention to something or other. <laughs> you know, one thing this election has revealed to me so far is who is paying very close attention to the internet and who is not. Yeah, well, a pandemic too, right? And, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. In the element chat, we have uh, element chat folks for the Socialist Alliance, a public chat room on well, Matrix chat, which you can access using Element. 
practice there as well. And I just spent the afternoon uh, making some new events. I was mentioning that I'm having a launch party and I'm also having a birthday party two days after the election. And I put a little guilt trip in my um, birthday party description, basically saying, if you don't vote at all and you're eligible, you can't come to my birthday party. <laughs> but, I mean, come on. I've been like, I've been like sweating bullets for a year to get people to vote and you're going to not vote and show them up at my birthday party. Like, no, thanks. <laughs> Oh. Come to the next one. Come to the music events after if you're not a voter. It, it, spoiling your ballot is fine. If you physically went there and spoiled your ballot. Now, Phil, which Phil is this? Now, this is a completely public Zoom. We may get renegades in here. Oh, is this Phil good? <laughs> <I'm> a renegade. <laughs> you never know. We got, what, three, uh, at least uh, three Phil's running, right? Right here. Sorry? Right here. Yeah, Phil's yeah. Right yeah. Here. But Thanks. Phil, you know the Phil's. I'm, I'm referring to uh, Phil Davidovitz is also running, but he's not on Facebook very much. Doesn't seem. He hey, hey, Phil, how's it going? Hey, how do you now? How do you press record on this thing? You said to record it. Oh, okay. Yeah, everyone, you. press record. Okay, I'm recording. Uh, I'm recording with OBS Studio on my end. I got to ask permission to record it. Oh, does that pop no up? record? Yeah, record. Okay, okay, cool. Is it working? Yeah, it just says uh, after permission. Oh, I didn't have to grant you permission though. That's weird. Did someone else grant it? No, it says ask the host permission. Then verbal, press the check mark. Verbal. Oh, but are you sure? It, does it say recording right now? Uh, let's see here. Uh, does it does the button light up? Okay, let me see here. It should turn to red. I think. It should say recording dot dot dot. It just says ask host permission to record. Then this is close the box. So I close the box. It is uh, it hasn't recorded yet. Okay. So, uh, I did not see it. Try ask me permission again. I don't think it actually asked me for permission. Okay, so I just I just press the button record. Does the light up? The button light up? Uh, no, I mean, I am recording. It's not an end of the world if we can't get this to work. But uh, okay, I don't know I'll have a copy. Give I'll you that. Per Sorry, yeah, okay. Egg Dream will have a copy. But um, does okay, anyone know where I'm? Up. Does any this give is going to come up again? Does anyone know where I'm supposed to grant that permission? So, I've just been give asking. Your, give later. your command. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do some research while you guys chat. I'll find it. Out. I gotta, go. yeah, just the button, the button, the button says uh, record, it's blank. So then I press it, then it keeps saying permission, and that's it. Let me see. Peter yeah. Dogma is here. Yeah, oh, Peter Dogma. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, yeah, it says please ask us to give you permission to record. Who's the other guys here? You got Matthew, oh. Peter, Adam. Who's this guy? guy up here? I'm up in uh, Markham. Uh, oh, who's this guy? Uh, so are you in the Igri iteration? I go by Igri NFT, <laughs> but um, oh, cool. so like uh, what you were saying before, like uh, if you don't vote, like uh, actually, like I would go with like um, no identification. So then, like if um, you don't have like Canadian citizenship and you're not allowed to vote, you're not allowed to contribute. I don't agree with that. So. I know my. No, I said uh, if eligible. Uh, if eligible. I know my my priest has oh, been here ten years. He can't vote. My priest couldn't endorse me because he's been here ten. He's not no citizenship. He's, he's been here ten years. Giving a communion, on, I guess he can't vote. It's kind of funny because he got his papers in it. <laughs> no, I like the idea of the world citizen, where like there's no states, and then I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. the idea, but I'll try that out, and we'll see. Hey, I, got... I get deported. I was born here in Canada, but hey, like, Matthew, let's try it without I got... like any identification. Matthew, I got kicked out. I didn't get my name in the Toronto Star, the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Who got it? Who got their name? Is it Oh, guess what? Okay, you know, like the, young, the new uh, mayor candidate, Jack Yan, he came in at the end. So I've been since May for, for uh, Farron, Assad, a whole bunch of other guys. Uh, Robert, none of us got me. Only uh, Sarah, uh, Chloe, Steve Panwasi, Jack Yan, Isabel, and uh, Blake Acton. All got uh, like, they had a big thing on Jill, and then they got the side pictures of them, these other people are running. And then they got our names at the bottom, and so and so is running so these names. Like, really? I've been around since May, and I got no mention at all. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's Toronto Star. I only buy the Star because I want to read the comics and buy the TV guide. That's why I buy it. You know? Without the high and lowest, there's no Toronto Star. <laughs> um, folks, you should be able to record now. Everyone press record and make sure it's okay. recording. That way we have like many backups, yeah, even if the yeah. government comes to kill half of us to destroy yeah. this conversation. It, 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 changed. So progressive. it has a happy so face. Easy. It's okay. It has a happy face. That's good. Decentralized, decentralized, decentralized. Yeah, decentralized. I can't and, uh, record. I think it's, uh, it's, it's Sammy. a laptop only feature. Sammy's looking good. And hey, uh, Sammy. folks, 
Um, but before we get deep into the chit chat, one more just a uh, perfunctory thing. I'm just going to put those events that I just mentioned in the chat, you know, like the birthday party that you can't come to if you don't vote and uh, my launch party on Wednesday and um, the overlapping concert that my wife is doing. Um, please, RSVP, if you can make any of those. And we, oh, and we have a rally tomorrow. I'll put that in the chat. And uh, this will also be in the log that's published so everyone will know some of our upcoming events. And if anyone else has any upcoming events, uh, put them in the chat. And then the published log will have um, all the events that people want other people to go to. We would probably do this uh, every Sunday. It'd be like, hey, what's actually happening this week? Here's something. I mean, one of those. Are you things. also doing? Oh, well, uh, are you also actually, doing like a one p.m. every Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays? Your meetings too? Uh, uh, if someone meetings? RSVPs, I can show up for that Zoom. But uh, I, oh. we, don't, we don't have enough uh, people in the call bank for that to happen. Either. I was going to mm -hmm. piggyback off of what uh, Adam was saying. Um, as may, some of you may or may not know, I've been taking the lead on doing uh, debates. They're going to be virtual. Um, I've done a, a couple already. A couple have been canceled. And uh, there's many more scheduled. Wednesday, uh, sorry, Monday, tomorrow is uh, Ward 3, and it goes on from there. I believe Ward 11 specifically uh, is scheduled for Friday. I'm doing five debates on Friday because I have the, the day off. So... Um, we're going to get a lot of debates out. Everything's going to be on YouTube. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy what I'm doing. And uh, it, it's all because I mean, we're all here. I, I hope we all like uh, municipal politics. I know this is kind of a um, rallying against the man. And the point is to evict John Tory. And I, uh, that's one thing we all can agree on. That, um, Matthew, where are these uh, debates being held, and where can I find a list of them? So your your uh, Ward fourteen, I haven't scheduled yours yet, but as okay. long as as long as your email address is on the Toronto website, then yeah. you'll be then you'll be hearing from me. Awesome. Okay, so you're gonna get uh, the counselors together and like the candidates and have them debate. Well, I mean, I'm gonna send the emails. A lot of them don't show up. For example, uh, John right. Tory. John Tory didn't show up to the uh, to the mayoral debate that I've already done. Um, a lot of I find a lot of the incumbent counselors are not going to show up. For example, Ward Three is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think Mark Grimes is showing up. So yeah, it's a cowardly uh, cop out because well you know be ahead don't let uh don't say anything stupid that might uh make oh what the heck like hey when you're 50 who, in your 59 who gives a shit <laughs> <laughs> really hey sammy who's 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 your incumbent uh fletcher oh mine yeah yeah no. you yeah. Got, yeah the old girl fletcher there going eh? yeah you see my yeah. tweet what i said about her this morning sorry did you see my tweet what i said about her this morning no, 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 no. I didn't. I made her comparison about her age, about her hair, hairstyles. She got more hairdos than Meryl Street movies. <laughs> I said that. Uh, something about her, something John Tory put about her, and I said, you know what? I said, uh, she must be nice. She, I wonder what it's like when she's turned from gas to electricity. You should ask her about that. <laughs> Okay, folks, I promised um, minimal structure, but I've got a brief idea here. I did mention one concept is that people can come to ask the Socialist Alliance questions. Uh, that means there's three people here who should get a turn to ask a question of the rest of us if they want. And that is Egg Dream and Matthew and Phil, who is, uh, you know, an independent mayoral candidate at the moment because we've yet to make a pick for our mayoral uh, nominee. You want five bucks? Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. Do I want five bucks? <laughs> you haven't picked somebody yet, buddy. Okay, ten bucks. I'm on being cheap. You're all right. <laughs> That's all it's worth to you. Okay, you're fifteen. Bucks. Is this like a thought experiment question? This is the question you have of the socialist lines. Like, do socialists want five? No, 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 no. Like, yes, socialists want five dollars. They want ten. <laughs> no, no, no. You're worth, you're worth a million dollars. We're human beings with normal, on. like, linear values where we want more of things we think are good, and you know. Oh, don't get Plato on me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if there's no questions, who else? Oh, I, I have a question, oh. if that's okay. Perfect. Uh, well, I already asked you this question, but I guess I'd try to re re uh, find it and then I'll and the other guys can think about it too. Like, I wanted to see if there's like a way to do like a proportional votes to proportional time on the chair. So I don't, um, I don't think it's like optimal to have um, the four-year term just by one candidate, especially if you're a ward. Uh, 
you know, rose uh, for 14 candidates. But then, like, if it's kind of unfortunate, yeah, like with the debates, people don't come and participate. But then, like, for the old four year term, like, there's 13 other people that are going to be, um, you know, that are interested in like helping out, and uh, one person wins, but then he, that one person will get to monopolize like the full four years. But if you did like a proportional vote to proportional time on the council seat, so say there's like 100 days in the council, and then um, if everybody, you know, uh, we'll just make it simple. If there's just like five candidates and then um, everybody got equal time, then that's like 20% for each um, each seat, right? So they can sit like, you know, for the first five days or yeah, something like that. Are, I don't are know you serious? Sense. Are you serious? And you just keep rotating. It's kind of like, like uh, this is, this is I know a joke, it's like right? going to be very chaotic. Hey, well, well, look at the articles. The so so why do you think it's a joke? What's wrong with yeah. this idea? No, but the, the, this, this proposal make, doesn't make sense in a context that you propose it, but in terms of a single party leadership, they, they, rotating party leaders uh, of, a, of a party uh, that, that that would make some sense but in, in this sense it doesn't make uh sense I, I would be in favor of uh term limits for counselors yeah, yeah. and uh term limits term, term. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 four years two terms for uh yeah. wards and mayors i think that should be yeah i would uh like to have a crack at it as well um I, I don't know about, uh, you know, the distribution of power like that. Like, you know, if uh, someone gets 40% of the vote, someone gets 60%, then they govern like, you know, 60% of the time, the one who gets more votes uh, and the other governs for a time as well. I think there should be more consensus building. There should be a structure where maybe the runner up gets uh, an advisory position or, uh, you know, a seat at the table, but maybe not a voting, um, uh, voting power. Uh, more than that, I think that if we had ranked ballots and someone was to get a clear majority, 50% plus one, um, that is, uh, that's a great start. And simultaneously, we need to have um, a mechanism of citizens initiatives, whereby if you were to get X number of uh, signatures on a petition, doesn't matter what your counselor says, what the mayor says, what the premier says, what the prime minister says, uh, no matter what, it goes onto the ballot. And the ballot, uh, that ballot, citizens initiative ballots can be taken maybe every year or every six months. I'm not sure that can be worked out, but there needs to be that mechanism. Uh, so you can bypass the politicians and actually get the popular will of people on at least um, singular issues done. Uh, as opposed to like, you know, having, I don't know, like this party platform where you have to vote for an entire platform. You might not agree with all of it. And it's really messy. Like you'll see down in the in the US, um, most people are in favor of uh, greater gun control. Uh, but the way made up to vote for a party platform, it dilutes that vote because people have other priorities as well but if uh, there was to be a referendum i'm pretty sure you would have a clear <laughs> majority in favor of gun control that's just one example Add to that, there's any can i can i jump in here oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yep. what we need is a working class government what we need is a socialist revolution that transfers power from the tiny minuscule avaricious business elite of less than 1% of 1% who make all the decisions behind closed doors to the vast majority of the population. That's why the Municipal Socialist Alliance advocates direct democracy in the form of participatory budget on the model of Porto Alegre in Brazil, where you have not dozens, not scores, but hundreds of meetings on an on a, on a annual cycle to discuss what the priorities of the city should be in the making of the budget. You have massive, massive influence. But the, but the way to make that work is of course, to expropriate big business and to make sure that the working class is, 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 is the dominant force in society and its interests will be adhered. The idea of plebiscites, referenda, initiatives, 
are as old as the American Constitution, and they haven't produced any significant social justice in over 200 years. Why is that? Because even when the voters of California or, or Arizona or Texas or New York initiate a vote on a particular question, what happens immediately? Big business moves millions of dollars into the, into the referendum, into the initiative vote, and that determines what everyone hears about the issue, thinks about the issue, and how they'll vote if they bother to vote. So you need to remove corporate power and replace it with workers' power. There is no technical shortcut. We need to increase the strength of the working class by fighting for free public transit, mass social housing, cutting the police budget, fixing the schools, making sure that you know, the healthcare system is restored. That's what we need to do. There's no quick fix. There's no shortcut to what workers, about, workers' power. What about mandatory voting? Bad idea. Why? Because people will, if you force people to vote, that means you have to punish them if they don't. And you're going to end up the, with jails full of people who can't afford to pay the fines. And if, they, if you force people to vote, those who want to avoid paying fines, you know, the punitive aspect, they'll just spoil their ballot. Mm. So if you want to bring about social change, it can't be by forcing people. It has to be by convincing people what their interests are and how best to advance their interests by organizing uh, you know, working class parties that fight for their interests. Can I add something there, Barry? Pardon? Uh, do you guys know about the Montreal politics? What goes on over there? I'm sorry, uh, you're, 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 I said, you're, do you know what goes? Do you know what goes on the Montreal politics in Montreal? How they run their business over there? Montreal. Yeah. yeah. yeah I know a little bit about it. Well, well, basically they have like us. We have councils, but what they have is they have a smaller population. They have councillors, but they have sub councillors. And what they do, like what uh, Sam uh, said, actually, is uh you get voted in as the candidate and then what comes after is a sub council so the second guy that comes in that got the most votes gets it as he's a sub sub counselor and actually i saw the stats they actually get a lot more done going that way than we're doing it right now not extremely the best but it's a lot better than we're doing so uh, phil you're you're saying you're saying that the losers get to sit on a sub council well that's how they do it in montreal they have like the most i don't votes. think so i don't think that's, that's how, how they do it that's completely alien to Canadian law. There's no way that a loser gets to sit on at council. No way whatsoever. No, I think what he's talking been about. been misinformed. Uh, I, think hired Hillary. I think what he's talking about, I think Montreal has you know, like a like a like a sort of a metropolitan council and then you have like smaller bor borough yeah. councils. Yeah, but borough like councils. How we, like borough. how we used to have, right? So yeah. we still we still have it, right? Like um uh, like uh, we have we have Toronto Council, but Etobicoke Council sits separately. But the council representing Etobicoke chairs that. Yeah. But so what Phil's saying, instead of the councilor from Etobicoke chairing it, the sub councilor would chair that meeting. But the sub councilor is someone who was elected in the general election. Yeah, yeah, the one who finished. He didn't come second or I, third I, I, or fourth. No, 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 the main no, 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 not a loser. No, no, that's a, I would have been wrong. No, no. Yeah, well, that that's the system you have in New York. Yeah, you have borough councils, Staten Island, Brooklyn, Manhattan. They have their they have they have councils for the um, the five boroughs that make up New York City. That that that's not unusual, but capitalism still rules unless you have workers' parties running for on a workers' agenda, elected and and able to implement their policy. What about limiting money and spending in uh, in the elections? and your budget comes completely from, let's say, the city or from the province or the federal government, and uh, everyone <laughs> has one, let's say, platform or brochure that they can send out to every elector uh, to lay out their platform. Well, the, no the problem with that is that big businesses will find a thousand loopholes to spend money undetected or even, even in violation of the law. And they'll pay off some judges to get away with it. 
the other mm. problem with that is saying that all the candidates get their literature funded out of a central election uh, chest means that uh, the fascists, you know, the, the proud boys, they run candidates, your taxes are going to pay for them to tell outrageous lies about visible minorities. But I, I feel like those groups and extremists came about because there's been this lack of space to actually, to actually, you know, uh, verbalize yourself and to actually have representation. That they that's were just not. That's not why they emerged. So that's not why they. they, they a, these these I, fascist I scum. To that these white supremacists emerge because capitalism is in crisis. There's growing inequality. The environment is 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 on the verge of collapse. Infrastructure is crumbling. That's why yeah, but, these. That's why yeah, these populists, because there's, there's no also, revolutionary alternative. These these populists reason, emerge. There's also reason as to why capitalism has survived so long. It finds its way to adapt, right? And one of the ways in which it does that is by making the electoral system, the democratic system, so unresponsive and so oblivious to the actual will of the people that some people obviously get disenfranchised and disillusioned yeah so then they just give up and then they they form their extremist cults and like you know these movements i've personally seen people get radicalized you know it's yeah. it's because they feel like their voices aren't heard they're out there sh shouting in the streets writing letters to their mps whatever you know signing petitions nothing changes so no. they get radicalized because they know the system doesn't work for them that's i feel like that's the the sim the extremism and the anger in our communities and the reason as to why capitalism still exists in its form is because we don't really have real democracy i i that's my theory that's you're absolutely that's you're, you're 100 percent correct very yeah. so to have more democracy it's not necessarily it's not necessarily about uh you know who has money and who's spending and like a, i guess a workers government would help in like facilitating workers government would be decisive because a workers government wouldn't tolerate corporate rule it would expropriate the giant landlords yeah, it, it would, would make sure public them. transit yeah. is free and then you need it a party that advocates them. advocates it radical would. solutions to radical problems without that, that you're just spinning your wheels but Very, we're we're actually, a voice to everyone and if that includes extremists, I think you know what? So be it. No. So be it. I'm, I'm not in favor of giving democracy. it. I'm not in favor of giving the Nazis one dollar. The <laughs> Nazis murdered half of my family in Europe. I'm not in favor of giving them one dollar. I think they would die out eventually because people are going to see how ridiculous they are. No. I. Very, very. They, very. they died out and then they reemerged. They're reemerging now. In Italy. Yeah. In Italy, in, Italy yeah. in, in, in Poland, in Austria, in because Brazil. You have capitalism there and you have an oppressive democratic system there. I, I, it's an undemocratic system. So I yeah. think. Those we, need to, we need to build counter movements. We need to build counter movements. We need militant labor unions, militant tenants organizations, militant ecologists, militant feminists. Militant LGBTQI people, militant Definitely. consumer rights people. If I, Definitely. I, and we will empower all those. And I yeah. think but it, it, you will also have to stick by a set of principles. And principles would be let people have a voice. Let them have a say. Let them be part of the process. And that militant, radical, left-wing workers, movements, and groups, they will overpower white like supremacists and terrorist groups and whatever the have you yeah, let's hear the, the reason the reason why the nazis triumphed in germany is because the communists and the social democrats were fighting each other rather than saying no platform for fascists kick the ss off the streets lock them smash them there's no free speech for fascists fascists want to put you in a, in a into a gas chamber there's no free speech for that sorry Okay, Barry, uh, let, let, let's give Matt a chance. He had something on his mind. I was just going to jump in there that um, uh, one, of the, one of the examples you guys, uh, I, I don't mean to generalize, but you guys are saying are uh, like free transit. And I think the way to accomplish that is to take advantage of capitalism. You know, I did an interview 
with a gentleman who's running in Ward 9 Davenport, and his idea was to expand the retail uh, within the TTC. So you're paying, sorry, sorry, they're paying rent, and all that money is going towards the TTC. In, in that way, specifically, the TTC can be self-funded. That, that's, that's truly what I believe. And a good example, I'll give you guys, have you ever been to Chester subway station? There is, there, there are large portions in the front. And if you extend it a little more, you could fit a cafe in there, maybe a small restaurant, maybe even a McDonald's like they that, do. That at, wouldn't, that wouldn't pay for 1% of TC, TTC expenses. You're, they're no, all you're, already, they're already shops in almost every TTC station, subway well, station. I know I understand that, but but I'm talking about like uh, franchise chains, recognizable names. And the first thing I would do uh, uh, if I was in charge is I, I would uh, call for the CEO's resignation because he needs to go. Yeah, he, he should be elected by the workers, not paid five million dollars to lord it over them. Hey, Bader, I got a question to ask you. Uh, F Phil Miguel uh, had his hand up. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, hi guys. Uh, um, since you're talking about TTC, um, does anybody know what is the amount of money allocated on the budget, or uh, operating budget for salaries and benefits? Um, I'm aware that the, TT, the Toronto Police Services uh, allocate 90% of their budget for salaries and benefits. I never got a figure uh, about uh, salaries and benefits uh, with the TTC. Does anybody know? No, uh, I tried. I tried McGill. I tried for a while. They, all I know is they get thirty bucks an hour. They get perks. They get double overtime and triple. And that's all they'll tell you. It's not. Even, it's supposed to be listed public knowledge. It's not even listed there. I checked it out. Is it eighty percent? Most of the most of the TTC funding is for capital. Uh, ca the the capital expenditures, and the operating expenditures and so i think what we have to try to get back if you want free transit is to advocate for the uh, pro provincial government to pay uh instead of us paying out of the fare box like they should pay the cover at least 75 to 80 percent of the cost operating costs instead okay. of, um, like philadelphia some cities in the states do that it's mostly uh, uh most of the operating is covered by the uh, uh by subsidies from the CMP. you know the Senior level of yeah. another another topic of, of con a contentious topic is the reinstate restate they're gonna restate the the the, um, the traffic collectors or what do you call it uh, special constables to ask for people yeah. if they pay or not they fair collectors been. fair collectors yeah those guys I think should 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 be I don't think we need them. Yeah. We don't need them at all. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's so people are going to be criminalized. They, well, they, lost, they lost $60 million two years ago. They made a statement. We lost $60 million on lost rent in uh, people jumping over the whatever the turnstiles. I said, buddy, you lost $60 million. Why don't you, why don't you stop at $30 million? Why do you wait till $60 million they lost in revenue from uh, theft and uh, not paying their fares, you know, like about the uh, jumping on the streetcar in the back there? I mean, that's sixty million dollars. That's that's gone like that. That's just like something's wrong there. Yeah, but, You're talking about uh, subsidies and all that. But sixty million bucks. It's not I, all people evading fares. That's uh... no. I'm just saying. I'm just that's just an example. I'm just saying. But sixty million dollars lost revenue right there. You know, like something's wrong with the system there. And speaking of fare inspectors, I just link you folks to my own little uh, let's call it a TTC travelogue of when I was harassed by a fare inspector, and. Uh, uh, what can I say? I just want to read it to you guys. It was just so surreal. I, I saw this headline. This was back in um, 2018. And the headline that I saw in the store right before this happened was Presto to cost TTC millions more than current fare system. And I'd already been uh, complaining about Presto. And uh, then this happened. So I saw the headline. Uh, and then I boarded, this is, I'm reading now, I boarded with 325 in hand, rear machine broken. At the front machine, I waited in line while a teen and her mom explained the machine to her grandmother. So this was taking a while. By the time they finished, we had just arrived at the station, so I assumed I had to get off the car right away. So I walked up to the fare inspector and showed him the 325 in my hand, and I said, one of those machines is broken, and the other one had a lineup. He asked to see my ID. So this is also related to carting. 
And I, I said roughly, what? No, I'm not showing you my ID, but I will pay the TTC $3.25 because I already knew about carding being bad. I'm like, you don't get to do that. And I insisted that they had no legal right to require my ID. And they kept demanding ID, accusing me of fraud and refusing to accept my payment. It was escalated to some other peace officers who said that while the first two dudes couldn't demand my ID, they could. But after much arguing, they let me go pay at the front booth without presenting my ID and going my way, which is what I would have done if those goons hadn't been there, but not without first going through a long and bizarre interrogation in which I declared at one point, oh, it's a bizarre interrogation, which I declared at one point, bizarre and Kafka-esque. I remarked at one point, this isn't the Ontario I remember. I was on my way to you. <laughs> <laughs> the officer looked sincerely like hurt to hear me say that. He was like, oh. This is the actual cop, anyway. I remarked to a friend afterwards, I almost didn't know what I meant by that, <laughs> but I, I had doubted, as an aside, the one peace officer's in, innocent explanation that they only generally want ID for yada yada. It's already been in the news that the police have access presto data without warrants. And while I don't know how Ford will address illegal immigrants, I do know that the more quote unquote reasons you have to check people's ID, the more opportunities there are for quote unquote accidentally coming across an illegal immigrant. Whoops. Of course, the officers on the ground would need no knowledge of this principle. One of the many reasons that arbitrary ID checks are a bad precedent. Hashtag boycott presto. Hashtag presto is racist. And uh, you guys can see how that led to a bunch of other posts later, but um, that's, a, that's just like one line in the platform these days. But, you know, I was ranting about this just stuff a while ago. Yeah, it's so you know, fair yeah, another layer silly. of authoritarians looks like stars to hear. I'd, I'd like to I'd like to propose a sports event. Yes, a sports event. <laughs> I think we should pick two or three um, subway stations and we should have a, an event for the person best able to leap over a turnstile. <laughs> they, they can do it. They can do Earth it with, fairy. with their hands. They can do it just by jumping. They could use a pole vault, you know, uh, even a catamaran. Uh, what, you know, whatever. We, we could have several events for men, women, for people in, you know, uh, fluid uh, gender uh, situations uh, to see who can jump the highest over a, over a, over a turnstile. <laughs> and we should publicize this this sports competition. And when the police come, we should invite them to see if they could jump as high. <laughs> hey Barry, Barry, hey. Uh, Barry, my buddy, my buddy Miguel is a ballet dancer. He can leap high balls, man, over that any day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pape would Pape would win because uh, there's no tur you don't have to jump the turnstile there. <laughs> you just walk right how through. You, how do you yeah. know that, Matthew? Just slide under. I, uh, policy wants. I, I spent I spent two years uh, growing up at Danforth and Logan's. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Matt. Do you have a question now that you grabbed the floor from everyone for the um, airlines? Yeah. Um, so you guys said that you have not picked uh, um, the candidate you're going to endorse for mayor. Um, are there any other candidates in any other wards you are uh, you have announced or are going to announce that you're endorsing? Well, yeah, there's a just at first I want to distinguish that the individual candidates might make endorsements that maybe the alliance won't share, but obviously they're not they're not likely to contradict the alliance's endorsement. Okay. We have an alliance convention every month, so there's at least one more before the election. And uh, in my opinion, we should consider endorsing people who endorse this. Oh, oh, people! <laughs> hey, Adam, I endorsed you this morning, this afternoon. Did you get to tweet? Oh no, I was I was too busy like delivering propaganda. I did a, I did a video of you. I endorsed you in the video. I did oh, I was in a cafe. I couldn't hear. Oh, okay. It. Yeah, I'll go and back. And I uh, hey you I, hey Barry, I gotta tell you, you know what? You guys talked last time about the pray. I said I was gonna I was gonna make an announcement for elected. I'm, I'm gonna make a, a socialist committee in City Hall. Right. You wonder the reaction I got from that? Did you see my tweet? I don't know if you got tweet, but it said if elected, I'm a I'm a forming a socialist alliance committee in City Hall. With other ones, progressive and other like other you're not hurting them. Other groups yeah. should be interested. Yeah. That should be, you want to change get these groups there, not just you guys, but everybody in there. So the reaction I got, I got 350 out 
I'm not voting for you. What's the matter with you? And I got 2,000. Let's do it. Let's get these assholes out of there. Let's have change. 2,000 said yes. 300 said I'm not voting for you. You know? Uh, way to go, Phil. Good for you. That's the reaction I got. Just because I said I'm going to vote and I elected, I want change. We need new groups in there. Social Alliance, Progressive. We talked earlier just now about all these other groups, about the uh, fascists and all that stuff. But you know what? If you get, unless very, you don't get these groups there, you're not going to have any change. You got the same thing going on over again, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have a, a really good idea, or you can tell me that that's not true. Um, Matt's question suggests that we could have a great chit chat just going through the wards, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and uh, you know, some of them it's obviously we, like with the alliance has a candidate in that ward, and other there's there's a few that bear more discussion, and this would be a great forum to have some of those discussions. So I don't know. Does anybody have a strong opinion about Ward One? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I do, uh -huh. but I do, but I'm not, uh, I, I can't, I can't, uh, let you guys know right now. So okay. I'll just, I'll just lay out. What's your problem? Okay, buddy? Uh, just tell uh, us okay, right there. I'll, I'll take that. I live in Ward 1, so, uh, uh. Are you running? No, I'm not running in Ward 1. But, I uh, endorse you because I like you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wish I could run. But, uh, uh, in Ward 1, Charles Azuri is a labor endorsed candidate. Progress Toronto endorsed candidate. Uh. So like I haven't fully endorsed uh, like I'm like MSA as in fully he he has filled out the survey the MSA survey. I'm screen sharing the map. I didn't get that survey. Yeah, I was looking for it. Huh? Uh, like I, uh, I never, it's a link. So I think, I, Daniel sent me the link. I sent and I sent I sent it to him. He filled it no, out. I never got to, I never got the survey link. I didn't see. It. I was looking yeah. for it. Send so, it to me. Uh, so so the reason I'm not sharing is because I haven't done the debate for that word yet. Once I oh, do the debate, yeah. I will share who I who it's I'm uh, gonna be endorsing. Right. Well let's, let's I'm kind we, of we can focus on like are these candidates um adopting socialist policy? That's maybe not the same as who will endorse them, uh, you know, but um, yeah. um so this this is a, I, I can everyone see my screen sharing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. Okay, so Peter, this is Ward One. Uh, say okay. what you were saying. I missed that. Charles Azude, I'm leaning towards him. I would lean towards him. Are you volunteering I, with him? Uh, well, I offered my sir. I offered. Uh, I went on a canvas with him one one day. So this, gotcha. Uh, and like, so he's got all his links here. Um, <laughs> who uh, does anyone else have a pick for Ward One, or does Peter have a number two pick? Number two, uh, uh, Vincent Crisanti. Uh, uh, no. Oh, wait. No, they, 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 <laughs> they, I guess you what the guy look like. No, there is no number two pick. No, can you show me what the guy looked like? Chris, uh, Chris uh, Anthony? I, is that that guy returning from retirement? Yeah. He was a previous yeah. counselor previously. Oh, for, no, no, no. That's he's Tory. He's, 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 he's loyal to Tory. He's a conservative. He's a conservative. He's Tory's minion. He, that's he's what he, the he was deputy. He was deputy mayor for Tory. Yeah, deputy so, Tory. Oh, no, forget him. No, Doug, no. If you like Doug Ford, you'll love Vincent Crisanti. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he's from Tory. He's from Tory. He's a Tory guy. No kidding. Right. Yeah. Well, now you have your second choice. My God, what's going on with the alliance here? He was a uh, Barry's just uh, too funny for his own good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Listen, so I got, I gotta go, I gotta go, but I just want to. Uh, 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 just, uh, I don't know if Matt knows this, but the debate for Ward One, like physical debate, is October fifth at. Uh, I will, I will, I will be there. I will be okay. there, but I, but I'm also gonna have my own. Uh, I know. Yeah. Uh, a virtual debate. Yeah, I know. Okay, everyone, please come to the MSA rally at yeah. uh, Young and Dundas tomorrow at five thirty. If you're active in the committee, please come at five so we can set up the banner, the megaphone, a bucket for collecting money, uh, flipboards to uh, get uh, the names and contact bring your information. Voices. Bring your voice, bring your musical voice. Rally to evict John Tory. That's the name of the Facebook event. Barry yeah. wrote the text and I added this, uh, this obnoxious title. <laughs> so five o'clock tomorrow at, at Young and Dundas. Hope to see you all there and bring your friends. Especially bring your enemies. <laughs> no, they come. They come they without any thing. encouragement. <laughs> you guys, uh, is that you guys uh, endorse Thomas? Uh, war, war, two exactly is, I mean, war two is. I uh, mean, War two is Thomas, and yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's basically yeah. Hand, hand, hand. Hand. Uh, Thank you. By the way, I nominated Holy Day to be the villain, the Progress Toronto villain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he's Doctor No. On I call him the turtle. You know, I call 
Holy Day, Gru pointed out to me that it was Holy Day's motion to do zero encampments. So like as much as it's bad that Wong Tam signed it, it wasn't her idea. It was Holy Day's idea. So bad wow. idea. It's, uh, it's, it's Holy Day. Oh, uh, whatever. <laughs> Soon we want to say it. Holy or Holy? I don't know why you say it. Okay, so Ward 3. Strong opinions, folks. I'm Mark Grimes is the villain. I'm Grimes is the villain. I Amber, did. I did Amber. interview. I did interviews with three of the candidates, and uh, I, like that is the debate that's come that's going up tomorrow night. But nice. I mean, I, I I like I like all of them. Um, all of them. But but I don't. I I'm big on incumbents not returning because they're part of the problem. Did everyone come to the debate? No, no, it's it's going to be tomorrow night. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, record, sure. Recording it tomorrow night, putting it up on YouTube tomorrow night. Mary Markovich good. is a uh, new blue party, if that makes a difference. Oh. <clears throat> but, uh, to someone. <laughs> but I like, I, I like, I like, um, uh, I feel horrible saying uh, this because the debate's tomorrow, but I, 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 I really I, like, don't, don't. I, I really like Marco Valley. I really do. Where's that? Yeah. Marco Valley. I never heard of him. But have you know Bonnie Yu? He's, he's a, a he's a he's an ex uh uh army guy. Hmm. Uh, one of those. And he he was dispatched. It's in the interview I did with him. It's not up yet, but hmm. uh he he um he was dispatched to deal with the the crap that was going on with the uh long-term care homes. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Phil asked about Bonnie Hugh. I wanted to uh, mention that although uh, obviously um, me being in like leftist NDP circles, I hear like a lot of like pro Amber Morley. Um, when I looked the people up, I like the fact that Bonnie Hugh has a background in linguistics. Uh, I was a two term student president of a cognitive science uh, student association and linguistics is one of the four cognitive sciences. And uh, I guess I've seen a lot of unexpected connections you might not expect think to be there between the cognitive sciences and the political sciences and I don't think there's enough people in politics who understand psychology linguistics philosophy and computer science so uh, as much as Amber Morley sounds great I would not be upset if if Bonnie got in because I would say oh that's interesting we want a linguist on council I actually <laughs> did I actually did an interview with Bonnie it's go it's going to be out tomorrow morning perfect I'll listen very closely yeah good story she's got to like good been through a lot of hard times or she's on the streets too okay well moving right along here well, okay, Ward 4 is like a well-known race between Gord and Kemi, right? Is anyone going to, uh, what's going well, on? Gord with Kurtz? Uh, well, I, I, did a, I did an interview with uh, uh, Siri. Um, you know, we may not agree politically, but she did have some good ideas. But uh, I, again, that that debate is coming up this week, and, and I can't wait. I'm excited. She worked for Tory, right? She's a Tory employee. Yes, which would be the... The one strike against, or maybe I don't know. Yeah. Maybe there's more. But, yeah, uh, but, but in this ward, I think this. Uh, who? What was Toronto Star poll? Who did they have in uh, uh, second behind Gore Perks? I think they had. Uh, I think the Toronto Star poll is probably off, but I, I think they had. Uh, yeah, they, Siri. Siri, yeah. Yeah. But I think, and but I think it, it, Kami's votes, uh, like. It, it's understated. I think she has quite a significant support in that writing. So she, she, does, she, she does. She does. Yeah. I did an interview with her as well. Okay, well, let's look at the next word. We'll probably be doing this uh, uh, again, so we don't have to belabor it, but uh, um, five. Okay, well, uh, this one's easy. Good luck, Padvani. Yeah. <laughs> any any yeah, disagreement? Yeah. But she's good. I mean, Padavan is good. Yeah, she was at the Progress Toronto conference. I remarked to someone else I met there how she seemed like a very experienced politician. I could see her mind working very quickly, like scanning the entire room and like the social structure in like a split yeah. second. And I thought, like, wow, I'm working up to having that energy for this campaign. And the charge is like hitting the ground running. I'm like, okay, this woman's doing something. Even she, she, she came out to me at the approach, says, Bill the Cruz, Mary Canada. She just came right up to me and started talking and, you know, shooting stuff i like her i like her yeah, i, like yeah, her I never like really chatted but she she um we crossed paths at the climate rally and she wished me good luck so that was nice yeah she's just a people person i like her 
She's really nice. very good energy. Really yeah, sweet. I was yeah, I was really shamed good. by the goodness of her energy. I was like, my energy is not good enough for this good energy. Oh, <laughs> no, she's like, I, work like I, I feel like I would have chatted with her at the progress run. I think I was just like, no, she's like a bit ahead of me with her positive vibes. I can like talk to some of these dudes here. Yeah, <laughs> no, she's good. I, I really like her. Yeah, 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 Nunziata's been there too long. But how, how long you been there, Nunziata? Twenty five years. It's it's been a long time. Oh, it's, Adam. Yeah. Adam, you said she's a seasoned politician. She's uh, been a politician before. Well, she ran before. She, no, she's, uh, she's yeah, she she ran, but she um, but she hasn't got. Uh, um, she's she already gone. She already has the right clothes. But she's a seasoned actor. So, so the thing you guys should know about Ward Six is this actually features the youngest uh, um, candidate in the entire city of Toronto. Hope sure she's 19 years old. She's just she just graduated high school, wow. and she's already making a run. And and uh, I, you know what? We I did an interview with her again. It's not out yet, but um, I, I'm very interested to see what happens in this ward. Yeah, she's protected by her big daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, yeah, you know, she needs to be. Uh, we need age good. diversity on a council. Yeah. Yeah, all ages. <laughs> That's in my arts platform. More all ages events, including city council. James got to go. James passed back. He's another guy. <laughs> Seven. Seven. Um, well, Christopher uh, Mam. Christopher Mam. I like Combs. I like Amanda Combs. She she used to be a a CCA a director. Right. But look at this. Picture we don't have her email. We we were going to email her at the survey, oh. but yeah, but then none of them have none of them. Have yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah. She's on Twitter though. I need to tweet her. Um, okay. Maybe it's my fault for not being good at Twitter and being like an old man expecting an email. She's easy to find on Twitter. That's not, yeah, she's yeah. not obscure. Um, eight. Okay, so uh, I really loved uh, Matt your interview with Phil uh, Davidovitz, um, in part because he shared my like maybe naive like um, line of thinking about how to psychologically get to Tori, which in my case included like meeting a woman who plays bridge with his mom in the street and like accidentally calling his wife's voicemail while fundraising. <laughs> like, I and, like, you know, I'll, like, I'll tell you, fun. I I like that interview, but I talked I, to him I, and, he, and he, he doesn't want to defund by 50%, which is why we, I, I Barry probably would blackball him. No, um, I, I liked the interview, but I felt like it was a struggle to go uh, get through. The only thing that I'll say is that, well, most of the candidates, yes, they care about their award, but overall the city as well. He's more ward focused. Hmm. And and that's not necessarily a knock. It's just different, I guess. So, so I, I know less about these other folks. Yes, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, Evan, Evan there, this guy, young guy, Evan. He's a bit of a, he's a snot. He won't reply to any emails. He's, <laughs> I don't like him at all. I, I met him, you know, Mr. Like my nose is up in the air. I got so many years ahead of you, this guy. Yeah. He looked oh, like he just started, nice. like he just uh, started well, invite him on here to defend these horrible attacks. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, oh, uh, I met him personally. I met him and I didn't like him at all. No. Nope. Well, to be fair, uh, Phil, you're just one vote. There's no, yeah, I know, yet. I know, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's the <Steve> vote. <laughs> Well, and then what about Mike Cole? I think. Uh, oh, how about okay, Mr. Sing Mr. Singapore? Right. Is it? So is it? No, is it? He's been there too long. He's the oh incumbent. Yeah, he's, he's the. Best best best. Best. I was confused. I remembered somebody mentioning him. I thought they mentioned him for a different reason. Can you click um, on many <laughs> He's a racist, buddy. He also, he's not the greatest speaker. Um, and I don't see information <laughs> for uh, Domenico. I can't well, find well, him well, anywhere. Well, what's can't so find him who's Wendy Weston? What's her name? You just got She's got dominated. Who, she's got who, by, uh, who am I? She, she got oh, kudos no. from uh, Nick because uh, she, she's not doing lawn signs from uh, Nick Possible. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I don't. It doesn't look like I, I could, anybody in this ward is interested. No, no, they're uh, yeah. Jeez, too young, and too, too young and too old. Okay, well, we'll come back to this one when people are less blase. Okay, uh, <laughs> well, this is blame the voters for their opinion. turnout. Don't blame them. I like Bravo. Okay, okay no, like yeah, this is a crazy number one. nine. I like oh. Bravo, Alejandra. Yeah, I like Alejandra. Oh, I, I like uh, Alejandra. Shaker. Big, big, big like note of Simon Fogel, guys. Bravo. Do you like no. him? No. No Simon. No, no Simon Fogel. Oh, he's the weird guy, right? 
He's, he's, he's oh, no, that's the other guy. That's I, I, I talked to a voter who was like harassed by him on Twitter. Like already, he like mm-hmm. doesn't react yeah. well and, and criticize. I did. I did do an interview on Twitter. He said Twitter is not a real place. And I'm thinking to myself that explains why your behavior like acts like there's no consequence. I I did do an interview with him, and uh, he was the one who came up with the idea of uh, making TTC a real estate real estate focused kind of the same in the same vein as McDonald's. McDonald's is not a burger company their real estate company um i also did an interview with jacob mandansky and and that's coming out as well soon and he's pretty knowledgeable as well well i hope we can steal policy everyone steals policy from everyone including the people who uh, shouldn't be in office like simon <laughs> simon started off okay. saying some uh, uh like interesting things like good things and then the whole thing happened with the harassment for grant, grant like, gonzalez is endorsed by john tory gonzalez yeah, Grand Oh, Tory is he? Is. Okay, so not. Yeah, I get, I give him a hard time about that, and I apologize. After. I will say this. I will say this publicly as part of my podcast. There's not going to be a bigger turnoff for me than than a candidate, whether going for election or re-election, that is being endorsed by John Tory. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. That's big, what, Grand. That's web. Yeah. His pictures yeah. on there. No, no, no. And so, um, Jamal I've heard Shaker. A bit of Jamal Shaker. He's a good guy. He's got a good story. He's got a really good. He's a people guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's interesting. Do you do you think he has um, policies in line with the MSA? Like, um, yeah, uh, no. I yeah. He's got. A, have you ever heard his Have you heard his life story? What he's been through and all? No. No. Oh, you did a good interview. I don't want to interview you. I watched it. I listened to it. Said, oh, oh, okay. Is that's that the on the show? guy? Yeah. What's that? Is, is that on this time? Yeah, he or his family's from uh, Afghanistan. Believe. Yeah, yeah, he went through it. Yeah, he's like, he's a, like, he's like, he's like a body, this, you know, people guy, like street guy. That's what he is. He okay. knows where the dog okay. goes. Am I correct that Bravo's the front runner in this writing? Uh, uh, yeah, she went, then John Tory endorsed Grant, and then, uh, then now that they're putting the ties with her. But I like Alessandra, what her name is. She's uh, good. So, I get nothing against her. Yeah, I like her. Yeah. Alejandra, yeah. yeah. The other day. She'll be part of I, the uh, the debate that I'm having. So I'm well, excited to hear her. I don't think she, she won't be MSA. She definitely won't be MSA. Why is that? What uh, policy do you think she would differ on? She, She's capitalist. Some of the things she will support. She does support uh, reducing the police budget, not as much as we do. Yeah. But out of the stuff of this MSA, what you guys stand for, she won't. Maybe like we, that's what you said. Two other things. That's it. But I was, I've seen the way will she you, presents herself. You'd be surprised uh, how many people will reject the brand, but none of the policies. Because, you know, I, I interviewed Barry Thongman, and he agreed with our entire socialist platform, but he's thought of as a far-right guy because of his social network, not because of the policies he actually supports or opposes. So you'd be surprised um, if, you, if, if you, like, if you like uh, sort of um, bracket everything other than policy. Platforms and policy only affect 10% of the vote, by the way. Oh, I know that. <laughs> I mean, roughly, I don't know the exact number, but yeah. Um, that is, it is sometimes the healthier conversation to have those. I mean, maybe we can make it be a bigger factor. Um, why is Miguel messaging me? Did he get booted out? <laughs> you doing, Miguel? Miguel yeah, why don't you message in the Zoom chat? Why are you messaging on Facebook? Oh. <laughs> Somebody's going at you. Okay. Anyway, um, so. Um, is there a big policy difference between Bravo and Jamal? That's what I would want to know. Yeah, there is. Yeah. What's the, well, what's the biggest policy difference? Uh, well, uh, I don't know about policy, but in the approach to the issues, uh, Jamal is more like a liberal. Alander is like a, a, a closer to the left NDP. Yeah, I think uh, Jamal is more centrist. Yeah, he's more. Okay. Well, in that case, my vote goes for Bravo. Not that I live there. <laughs> um, you know, years ago, I took political compass. I was just further left than the NDP and the Greens, but I never gone full communist. Ken's a big one. Whoa, yeah, that's right. Well, okay, so yeah, this is a big one. Um, oh, okay, I say Rock was up. I mean, the lawyer. April seems nice. Ausma is nice and yeah. has experience. Well, I, yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, um. I like I like Drew, Asma. Drew liked uh, um, Igor as well. Um, what was that? Oh. No, I was saying I like Asma as well, but she doesn't seem to be very um, accessible. She's 
She's not accessible. That is the big problem. That's another yes. problem with all these candidates. Accessibility. Well, I know where her office is. Matt is right across from where I used to go to an open mic at the boat every week. It's at like Christia Freeland's old office. She she perked her head up when she saw me putting posters up across the street. And it's like a brief second, like, yeah, that's a candidate. They're doing a thing very differently. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can just walk in there. Um, but but she, I do feel like, you know, having worked for the NDP last year and as much as I have affection for the far left, like political parties, right or left, are high control groups and she's in one. And uh, the Toronto Labour Council appears to be that to some extent, like like they have some commitment to work together with their little slate and like, we don't have that as much. We're not we're not so purist about like, I'm not going to get mad at Wally for like talking to a right winger or something. I'm going to be like, um, but when I when I met I was outside of City Hall, I got the impression she like wasn't sure if I was like a, a safe person to talk to in terms because everyone else treats people according to this weird political purity code of like, oh, you talk to so and so. Like like for instance, some people will say, like, how dare like I, I had like maybe two conversations now with Kareem Assad. So some people will say, like, oh, Adam's poisoned, you know, because he spoke to this woman and you know, just we have guilt by association, and that's part of how high control groups work, right? Um, I understand what you mean. When I tell people that I, I I had all the respect and love for Rob Ford, people get really weird around me. And and then they're like, so you must like Doug Ford. And I'm like, um, uh, he's yeah, yeah, not yeah, that equal opportunity. He's yeah. not as he's not his brother. And while I have supported him in the past, I do not like a lot of the things that he is doing right now. And I've been very vocal about it. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not a fan right now. So if, if, I mean, if I had to um, declare what I was, I, I would tell you right now that uh, I'm probably independent. Um, yeah, I got a name there. Sorry, Miguel's guys, hands up. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, did you guys um, had to, uh, comment, comment on Rocco at Champa? Uh, yeah, yeah, he has a good idea about. Uh, oh no, I, he's a... I, I know him. I know him. A long time ago, I know him a long time ago. He's he's a nice guy. He's a nice fellow. Um, he's one of the ones who uh, uh, helped me out when I had trouble with my uh, family court. Uh, he did a pro bono. Uh, he helped me out. I mean, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. You know, uh, took my money. I mean, he he did it for free because he he believed what was what was uh, uh, going through. Um, so he's the kind of man who will you know uh, remove his t-shirt and give it to you in case you know you're you're cold. I mean, that's the kind of guy he is. I believe when when uh, social action had our uh, during COVID, when we had our uh, joined the action at the long term care. I think Rocco uh, was there. And he was one of the speakers. Uh, what I was going to talk about, he has one idea that's kind of copied from the UK about the uh, congestion charge, uh, traffic, so, uh, reducing car traffic within within the city. Mm. I, 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 um, so, uh, like, I don't have any strong in this work for anybody. A April also has some good idea about the bridge. The Rocco wants to uh, reduce the. Uh commercial uh, taxes, that's what he wants to do. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that I can support. I didn't like that at all. No, I didn't no, think that's yeah. a yeah, So yeah. I, uh, we spoke to had... Rocco and uh, he was, um, he said he's in agreement with the uh, Municipal Socialist Alliance platform, uh, but he said that he can't support it because it's just, it, it's not a, a vote winner. <laughs> And he's like, oh, I'm, well, I'm, I'm that, that's fine. We can, yeah. you're going to have that one directional endorsement. Yeah. Like, I think I was, I think it was you all. I was saying that there's, there's some people for whom like endorsing the other direction is, is much more liability than asset, especially if like people don't actually know how far left when they are. And like, they have some centrist voting for them. <laughs> yeah. But Tory's, Tory's got him out of his wing now. He's got his, that's his next, that's his guy right there. Tory, him and Moise mm. and Gonzalez, this guy for sure. You know, have you seen his tweets about Tory? No. You guys no, remember? You, you guys remember a couple of years ago they had the uh, when they're closing, they're narrowing down the uh, seats. This guy was on city TV. The, he's a lawyer. Kept going on about it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And they kept interviewing him for like weeks. And then when they passed the law, whatever the law, thirty one over it, and they reduced the seats, then he disappeared, right? Because he kept saying not pro bono, not pro bono. He kept saying hearsay. As a lawyer, 
he's misrepresenting his, his firm. He's saying that it's not going to happen. You have my guarantee. They're not going to reduce the seats. I'm not going to pass the law. They passed the law and he disappeared. Never heard of him until I saw the election. I, kept, I, kept, I said, he kid looks familiar. And then I saw his background. I said, this is a guy who was on city TV years ago when they were having the reduction in the uh, seats there. So that's my that's my take on him. I, I don't have nothing against him, but I don't like these, I don't like what he stands for, you know. But Desert, I got a guy for you. I've talked so, to him. I, I also was probably going to get it though, right? Like she's the front runner, isn't she? Who, yeah. Ozma? Yeah. 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 No, I, I never. I keep changing. I'm I'm so bad at this. How, what's the right way to say it? I mean, yes, Ozma Malik. Ozma Malik. Ozma or Ozma? Yeah. Well, she she, she probably knows what you mean, but um. I get the impression she's, I mean, she's got the labor council nomination. She was a counselor before, so she's already got that network. She's got her call lists all ready to go, you know. Um, was she on the school board? No, she was like, no, no, dude, she she was cut in the, in when they cut council in half. No, I'm talking about asthma. She ran in uh, 2018, right? Yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah, but, and then, but yeah, but then she was also like, it, it, both things happened, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah, the, that's when they count, cut it, and so that I think uh, Cressy was a, a candidate. If they didn't cut it, she would have been a counselor. Yeah, well, and April ran against Cressy before. Um, yeah. Anyway, okay, so that's we've. Uh, I got a name for it. I got wait, wait, before I go. Oh I dear, this is this is where where I'm sitting doing this Zoom from. Mm. Uh, well, all I can say is that I'm glad that the Toronto Star like mentioned that the three front runners are parachutes. Oh, I mentioned your video. <laughs> Good. Good. Which is a Tory? I didn't say names. I just said parachute. And I just had a really bitter uh, dispute with Pierre via email because, like, someone emailed all the Ward Eleven candidates. Oh, I read it. What a nasty yeah, guy! Yeah, um, oh he's a really nasty guy. Uh, he's the Tory is nasty, man. The Tory endorsement for this ward is is Robin. I, uh, if I'm correct, isn't it? Oh, how do you call him, Adam? I, I thought that was a rumor. No. I, I heard somebody say that like they inferred too much from something and assuming that. I don't know. I, I'm not sure which one of them is the one that's not listening to the NDP because I'm surely the NDP would tell only one of them to run. Well, Norm's under the local union there. And Robin's. So I guess Robin's the renegade. Maybe she's a bit yeah. brighter than through to the right. Yeah. Norm, that doesn't sound right either, though. I don't know. I, it's hard to understand what's going on there. I mean, I know my story of why I don't work at the NDP anymore. It's like, what happened with these two? Is they're not coordinating? The NDP's not coordinating what they're doing? Or are they helping me split the vote? Who the hell knows? I mean, it basically, the you know, this is Diane Sachs is going to win. Probably what's going to happen. I mean, like, Christ, I, I, I would love the job, but, uh, you know. Um, what's what's Diane Sachs? You got a picture of her again? Well, look, she's, she was green. Um, I, he's a green. I did it. If you guys follow the link oh, that her. I just sent, there's an well, interview. Look, there's only one pool, but she's the front row of the one pool. I, 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 I did really an like interview her. with her. She's. Yeah. Uh, it was a good interview. She, yeah. Yeah, I, I met a woman at a at that at charity event the other day, and she was like, "Oh, I'm going to vote for Diane Sachs." And I said, "Well, you know, rank ballots. Like, she would be on my number two choice right now, and I liked the interview enough, and I'm going to listen to it again, and you know, study her platform. And in fact, being a member of the Pirate Party, I already pirated some of her platform into the Climate Platform. But to be fair, she pirated some of my platform, I think, because some people said, "Oh, Diane Sachs has been advocating poll.is," and I thought I used to be like the only one ranting with it all the time. And I think I mentioned it to like a general Green Party email, and they probably like put it in, like, "Oh yeah, talk about this thing." Um, maybe I'm paranoid, but I definitely pirated her platform. <laughs> Things like uh, expanding district heating and cooling, that stuff I'd always hear on the phone from Greens when I worked for the NDP and uh, uh, her thing that sounds kind of weird about taxing hard services, but actually makes a lot of sense, like uh, um, like Matt was remarking on in the interview. And uh, yeah, actually folks, I, I uh, while we're on the topic, I guess I'm in this ward, so I get to like interject here. Um, I made a new platform. Matt, I don't know if you've seen this. No, I haven't. So I, that's probably hard to read, right? Can I, add, can, can I, can I pick a couple parts uh, apart? Can you just go up to the top? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, first, just a bird's eye view here. I, I released a new platform, which has the two sort of pages before, but with these two expanded sections. And it also comes with the score to evict John Tory. That's awesome. I and love that. there is a, a call for covers. And so the evict John Tory playlist, which includes all of the videos of the violent encampment eviction that happened on Tory's watch also includes any versions that anybody will make of this song. So if you cover this song and put it on YouTube or you know musicians who can cover it and put it on YouTube, I'll put it in the playlist. And so we'll have like, a, instead of like We Are The World where you do it all at once, this is like all over the city, which is better for voting. We All The World is not an election drive. <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, I was just uh, delivered this all over the music faculty. Hopefully some people will take it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, right. 
Um, if and, you go uh, so anyway, that's that's part of the platform. And it's there's a few Easter eggs here. It says dedicated to Khalil Save right at the top. It says recordings available on the YouTube playlist hashtag Evict John Tory includes video of the composer's arrest at the hands of Tory's goons uh, by Adam Golding for eleven years of Rosedale. Check socialalliance.ca for our anti-Tory candidates. Some of those picks we're discussing right now. Um, and then it, as uh, Egg Dream mentioned, there's a little mark about intellectual property. But yeah, policy wise. Uh, I know it's Yaman joining the, the chat. Um, I haven't put in your suggestion yet because that's something I'll have to talk with the Alliance about because it actually uh, touches on their existing policy. But these platforms, the Climb in the Arts platform, I could just insert because uh, the Alliance platform didn't say much here. So there's not, not a lot of contradiction that was going to come in. Um, as I mentioned, the Climate platform was partly pirated from Diane Sachs, maybe five of these points. And I took some of it from what's existing in the Alliance platform and from stuff I said to a questionnaire from, I think, here on Sussex. And uh, the arts platform, I got directly from artists. Each one of these lines came from a different artist. Okay, can I uh, can I can I pick a couple apart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and if you way, don't mind. Speaking of picks, I've got I, I'm name dropping Perks and Matlow because they voted for the judicial inquiry. Anyway, um, l limiting large art grants. Um, I think maybe we touched. I I can't remember if we touched on this in our interview, but um, what about eliminating it across the board i'm talking no. about uh, uh, um i'm talking about uh, uh give me a sec sorry uh groups uh, sorry that that hold events in toronto like pride for example like uh social uh sorry scotia bank uh, caribbean carnival like the santa claus parade uh tasted then fourth is a bad example because they went belly up but other ones um, because these 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 organizations okay. quote quote yeah. they take in millions of dollars in um, in in uh, uh, sponsorship funding corporate funding and all that stuff they don't need the money from the city that was my point that I I, I think maybe I failed to make it but that was the point I was trying to make right uh, so so Matt I remember all that now and and here's how I would frame it. It's not about the amount it's about the ratio. If your funding is 50 50 like government corporate, Mm -hmm. then they're, they're going to have a balanced influence on what you do but if your money is uh you know 95 percent five percent like it's 95 percent corporate and only five percent government then like well corporations control you mm -hmm. and if it's 95 percent government well, then the government controls you mm -hmm. if you have a balance of funding sources then is it, this is similar to like you need a balance of opinions to have like free will basically like you need like you know contradictory inputs and so on so Adam, well, yeah, wanna, you should have a logic just adam i want to ask you your first line there Free, free up creative time by meeting basic needs. I like that. What is that about? Well, basically, as I explained to Arts, but when they asked for this arts platform, I said, you know, the arts platform isn't here because I was distracted by how our city's not meeting basic needs. And if like, if these things were passed, I could go back to the arts, mm -hmm. you know, like, like you know, this platform is all, the main platform is all about really, unfortunately, basic needs. You would hope that our, our we'd be refining something, you know, not at the level of basic needs, but we're talking about, look, housing, food, voting that's a pretty basic need uh man, jump know, in, man, not, jump not in. having not having ptsd as an adult and you know, being able to talk uh you know teachers knowing what they're talking about that's a pretty basic need you know the police not abusing you that's basic and like again housing 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 uh mental you go back health, to your, you go health. back to arts well but i just want to make a general point here if you see the theme uh, and also, also basic need yeah you know, to not be imprisoned these are all basic needs and then there is space left over for the arts if you meet all those things but it just it the structure of how this all happened just shows what the problem with the arts is and it's it's not that we don't have the right arts policy the biggest problem for the arts is all of the other policies what about uh i see up there sorry it's probably a bigger issue but you said i have there uh decriminalizing all drugs mm. is there uh you mean like everything or do you have a specific list everything it's, bodily, it's a question of bodily autonomy. You, you, you can regulate behavior and say like, don't act this way. And so a, a drug can cause you to like commit murder in which case you're like, that's already a crime. Um, but the drug that causes you to commit murder should not be a crime. You're, you shouldn't regulate what people put into their body. Um, oh. I, I won't quite say full stop, but I will say as a very strong default, you should not regulate what people put into their body. Uh, Isabella. Hey, Isabella. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, unfortunately, you know, the drugs of today are not the drugs of the 70s and 80s. And, you know, um, kids that are want to fool around and experiment and become addicted after one or two tries. And it ruins their life. 
and they only wanted to experiment, but now their life is ruined. So you think these drugs are a good thing? No, maybe. That's the difference. You know, it's not like smoking. It's not like peyote or mushrooms or, or, or weed or, or even cocaine. No, it's you just know, getting arrested makes it worse. You know, well, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a good thing. You know, we got, we, you know, I, I think you got to, we got to set some priorities. I, I think, we, you know what, there's the city funds so many different things. And I think that's half the reason why half of it doesn't even work. You know, um, anybody can do art, anybody. Anybody, even elephants and monkeys and chimpanzees and, 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 and roosters and chickens and everybody else does art. You know what I mean? Anybody can do art. You know, um, I want to see free transit. I want to see some real stuff done. Yeah, that's you right know, I mean, I, it's you know, I, 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 but you know, this, this, if you want to do free transit, that's going to take a lot of money. You know, I, I mean, we got the FIFA budget that John Tory's stashing away somewhere, you know. Um, so you know that's I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have FIFA you know if, if I was mayor I would be FIFA. Done. cancel FIFA or, you know, but you know I, I think I, I think it's not up to us I don't think it's up to the city to to add to a, a food allowance or a, or a shelter allowance because the next person that can, the next mayor comes in they cancel it or whatever you know what it's it, I think it's I think we got to fight for people to have enough money. So they can pay average market rent because these housing schemes are not working. No, they're not. You know, now they're having lotteries for affordable housing. Yeah, it's stupid. You know, so yeah. we gotta call this out. You know what I mean? I, I I hope to see most of you guys coming out to this protest on Wednesday. Like Adam, you you you're making this your 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 thing for at five o'clock. Well, the protest goes till four. You know, I, you need a breather time in between. Like, you know what I mean? It's hard. It's I, I don't know. You don't, you don't you don't things are not, I guess you're not planning on coming, right, Adam? To be honest, I just spent all day starting on my calendar and I'm still not done sorting on my calendar. So I don't know what to tell you. Mm. Yeah. I don't <sighs> know. Okay, well, uh, um, Matt was going to ask about a few more things, I think, in the arts platform. And I was going to mention about how I pirated some of this from Diane Sachs and the climate platform. Oh, yeah. So the other thing that I wanted to uh, uh, point out, I just wanted to clarify, uh, because I mean, I don't know the, the term you're using here. So yeah. make transit free at point of use. Yes. I just want to clarify what that means. Thing, saying it that way. That's how they talk about their health care. We, we hear we say free health care. There they say health care that's free at point of use because they emphasize it's not like not paid for. It's paid for somehow. So where is it paid? as opposed to like, is it free? The question is, where is it paid for? And um, the point of use is not where we pay for healthcare. We don't walk in the doctor and pay when we're sick. We pay maybe on our income tax and it's indirectly the money reaches the system. Um, transit, we pay at the point of use currently. We, we the, the moment we need to use transit, that's the moment we pay. We could buy in advance, but- And um, the only other thing that I would, that I would point out would be um, whether you'd be in favor of um, revamping, whether that means editing, uh, uh, upgrading, or outright getting rid of some bylaws. I mean, I, I mean, I've, you've yes. heard my, you've heard my interviews before. So there, I don't know if this still exists, but there, there was a bylaw. It may still be in effect where it is illegal for you to walk your alligator down right. those, oh, yeah, yeah, that's my question, yeah. On a, on a leash, that, yeah. <laughs> on, on Sundays. So Monday, yeah. Sunday, uh, sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's okay. But no, you can't do it on Sundays. So, <laughs> well, so yeah, the, the answer is yes. Um, and in fact, one of the things that Pierre was getting really uh, snooty with me about in that email thread yes. was uh, something I proposed to him, which uh, I called uh, repeal as you go instead of pay as you go, because you know, we have modern monetary theory, but what about repeal as you go? Maybe every time you pass a law, you have to repeal two of them. And uh, even though that's, you know, obviously that's just an initial thought experiment, there's no reason to assume the ratio is exactly two to one. Um, he told me that the government has the exact right number of laws and that Justin Trudeau is a genius. Um, yeah. I can see Isabel laughing silently. Yeah, it's really fucking funny, right? Anyway, so like here's an example of something we should repeal, code 608. And uh, the point I keep making in those kind of debates is that the more laws there are, the more opportunities for differential enforcement there are. Um, you know, the ombudsman already found unfair ticketing in Toronto's parks. And if those rules didn't exist, you couldn't unfairly ticket people under those rules, you know? Mm -hmm. And so in the limit case where there's zero rules, there's no unfair ticketing because there's no tickets. 
And, you know, as the tickets increase, every one of those, you know, it's kind of like uh, Blackstone's principle. You, you don't want to be uh, uh, ticketing uh, innocent people. It, it like really corrodes society. You want, you want to know, you want to know something that I've heard? You want to know something that I know? Is that I've heard, I've heard young like, teenagers tell people off who are drinking on, on, the, on public, out in public, that they don't need to see that. See, this is a big thing, you know? When you're talking about influence and people and whatnot and peer pressure and stuff, you know, there, there goes a, a long way to, you know, when, when children say, listen, we don't need to see that, you know? Um, and I, I kind of agree, you know? I, I, I you know, and, and I agree that, you know, it, it's, it, it's bad because they'll ticket a homeless person and drink it in a park, but if a couple's sitting there drinking a bottle of wine, they won't bother them, you know? Um, yeah, it's, it's 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 wrong what goes on, but but altogether, you know, I don't think people really need to drink. You know, well, you know, it's it's just hard to say. You know, you can't be too strict, right? But I think if you're going to allow drinking in parks or something, maybe it, it should be, you know, um, you know, uh, it should be uh, for an event or it should be, you know, uh, on a specific day or time or something. You know what I mean? Like. Um, that's how the trains you know, in England are. There's drinking. Because, you know, because, you know, the you, yeah, otherwise, you end up getting parties. If you make it legal to drink in parks and stuff, then you're going to have kids having their parties with, you know, four thousand students showing up to a park. You know what I mean? And disturbing everybody around. around the park. You know, it, it, it happens. It happens. In the size, they're separate. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. It's just thinking about stuff. You know what I mean? It, it occurs For, to me, um, Matt, have you not even seen page one of this? Did I not show this to you when we did the interview? This is your new one. Yeah, no one, right? Well, yeah, but this this is all the same. And I'm oh, oh, we lost. Oh, Matt, Matt stepped away. That's why he didn't answer that question. Okay, so anyway, uh, Adam, uh, well, can I, can um, I say something before you move off? So, uh, uh, yeah, coming up to to the point that is was trying to make that we don't need to uh, fund arts. Everybody's uh, is an artist. I believe everybody can be an artist, but. The artists and then su suppressed because of the material condition of their life, uh, uh, the working conditions, economic conditions, etc. And, uh, and and that's the point of socialism. Uh, go as socialists is to reduce the working time and reduce the, the pressures, so everybody can you know, work part during the day. And uh, as Mark said, you know, read poetry, go fishing, whatever, whatever they want to do. Right, and, and, to better ourselves, and that, as Captain yes. McCurd said. Yeah, and, and get rid of the uh, bees. Yeah. How many you say yeah. mustard so, bees? So, so, that, so uh, addressing the, these basic needs, yeah, will, will help uh, uh, reduce the amount of time giving people. Will, will help, and I think we need to fund some of these arts uh, uh, thing. I, I think we, uh, there are working working people who who like to, for example, go go to theater or opera, but they can't afford it, right? I mean, so we, we should try, try, try to make like, I think we have pre museum passes. Uh, yeah, but that, that's a way yeah, but, but that's, that's, that's an income issue. That's an income issue. Oh, no, but, it's not an art no, issue, it's an income no, issue. No, no, but no, so we have, so the only outlet is is these local artists uh, for, for many people. So we, we should we should uh, fund, fund them. And, uh, so the yeah. owner person can enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I remember there used to be Shakespeare in the park, but no, I don't see it any, uh, anymore. Uh, can I can I say something about yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, to your uh, to your point, Peter, it's uh, and to Isabella's actually both because funding arts, the main thing about funding arts would be taking care of basic needs. If we take care of basic needs for people that includes artists because artists are people believe it or not and th when they have their basic needs taken care of their rents their food and everything then they're able to creatively explore themselves more okay you you free that up that's a big portion of the cost uh when it comes to funding art and then there's also a business case for funding arts above and beyond that which is that it actually improves quality of life for everybody in the community uh, there is more engagement, um, more entertainment, there is more culture, and it can also drive up uh, tourist revenues. I think, um, it's a very, I, know, what? I, think it, I think that's a very small group that really care about art. You know, it's, it's not that many people. 
I mean, when I look at art um, on the sidewalk, I look at the art stuff that, that the city of Toronto has around Toronto, and I think half yeah. it's garbage. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah that's definitely I go, true. I go, I like, go to the Ego, and I look, I look at, I look at the group of seven paintings. I look at Michelangelo with stuff and everything else, and half of it I think is garbage. Picasso, no, okay. garbage, garbage. <laughs> Picasso's <laughs> garbage. No, you can, garbage. You can make garbage. things look aesthetic. Yeah. For example, the I, can, I can do some masculine or acid and, and do shit like that too. <laughs> Look, the underbelly of the gardener is disgusting, okay? There's a portion of it that they painted up, which was an idea that I had I had for a very long time, and they finally did it to a portion of it. It looks gorgeous. That's a place that you can actually hang out in. If they did that across the gardener, it would be an attraction that people would come to, and they would enjoy it. It is for the people of the community, but then other people will also be coming in. They'll be spending money there. That puts money into the local economy. What is there's a very you know, pragmatic reasoning, like reason for funding? When, when, when there's when there's a couple million people in Toronto, how many people do you think actually use that the skate park underneath the uh, underneath the um, gardener there? Hundred people in a weekend. I don't know about the skate park, but I'm just talking about generally everywhere. No, that's no, but that's like that's there under the gardener. That's the thing. That's the main attraction there right now, right? Isn't it? I don't you know. About those. No. I don't know. I don't know about the skate park. I know there you can, is. You can put out stuff. It doesn't mean you can lead a horse to water. You can't make a drink. I mean, you can build everything you want, and, and the public don't use it. And it's just a waste of money. No, I think it's like a, is, the it's public, like, public do use it. I, I remember the, yeah. seeing pictures. Of, they had, um, I think, roller skating. I think you can even do some ice I'm, skating during the winter. Yeah, but I've been yeah, down so, yeah, there. People, what, is, what, is, what, is, what is How many people are using the ice? 40 people? 40 people out of, out of well, two, two or three. How many people are in Toronto? No, it's more. It's more than forty people. It's I, I feel like I feel like the problem is that all of these installations and artworks are very, uh, they're very fragmented and they're not really developed to their full, like to their logical conclusion, to their full potential. Because that, um, if you are, if it is the same place where I think uh, it is, the skate park underneath the gardener, it's very awkwardly positioned and it's not. I don't think it's very accessible and it's. Honestly, I wouldn't want to be there because I'd be scared of like falling off onto the road and getting hit by a car. Um, some things just don't make sense, but then some things do make sense. And that's where you should give artists their creative freedom to work things out instead of getting city bureaucrats to decide what is artistic and what is not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so if, I may, if I may speak to that, this so this was implicit in the what I applied, I applied for an art grant before. I applied and, for uh, an art grant from the city before. Yeah, it didn't just go anywhere. Uh, just just one sec, Isabel. So um, the, the um, what, what the artist told me uh, was basically um, well, that's one thing Reg Hart said a lot that when the government controls the funding, the art becomes sort of stale and like you know. And uh, of course, on the other hand, if there's if there's no safety net, maybe the artists don't have the the, the spoons to actually make the art. Um, and if you look on here, there's one. It's it's hard to um, unpack here, but um, it says, uh, oh, where is it here? Um, uh, uh, the um, um, oh, how did I put it here? Well, let's just go through it anyway. I, I would, I would look to sell off a lot of art and build housing with the money. Pardon? You know, you know, if you want to have an art installation, have an art installation space in Toronto and change the art up every week. Don't just buy a piece of art and stick it in the city and and let it sit there. You know that that piece of art at Young and Bloor, that big tall piece of uh, metal that looks like a crushed can. You know what? It looks like it needs to be going to recycling. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I realize why I couldn't find it here. I, I kind of took out a longer version of this idea, but um, so th but this is what someone proposed to me who is sort of familiar with the problem. They said that when you go to the bar and there's live music, there should be a fee on the bill that's for live music, and the customer pays like a little percentage, and it says in the bill this is for music. So it's not like the venue owner being like oh, we're going to decide whether to pay the artist or not. The customer sees on the bill, this music goes to the artist, but the city kicks in an amount as well. And so basically, if you do that, if, if, you, if you itemize your receipt that way, there's an incentive because you get to pay your artists double without it costing you double because the city will subsidize uh, the pay. 
Um, this is what people were suggesting. Now, maybe the ratio is not right with double, but basically this is again, going back to what I was saying to Matt, that you want diverse funding sources. If, if you only have money from um, like the people who walk in the bar, then you're dependent on them. If you only have money from the city, you're dependent on them. If you only have money from like your academic position, you make music that way, you're dependent on that. You know, uh, if you have different sources, then, you know, there's no one, um, you know, um, person controlling the marionette, so to speak. Mm, what I don't understand, what I don't understand it is why small businesses, you know, um, are, are not are not allowed to fail. Small you know what I mean? Um, well, no, you know, one thing I notice is that, that some businesses do better than others. Some businesses, they have patios three times the size of the in interior size of the restaurant. You know, um, if they have this, if they can have, have that many customers, you know, they should be thinking of a bigger restaurant. You know, just not 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 having uh, you know all, all taking yeah. up all, all the bike lanes and everything else. You know, because because it's a small business. Yeah. You know, we you know, because uh, like I say, you know, half these small businesses have done nothing to do anything about being wheelchair accessible. The, the BIAs have done nothing to try to make sure that they're doing anything to make them wheelchair accessible. You know. Um, Businesses should be taking care of themselves, and, and if they can't, and if they fail, they fail. You know, there's there, there's no way you know, we're supposed to prop up every business when people are homeless. You know, you know if the, if the business fails, these business owners obviously shouldn't be business owners, and they should be going and get a job and work for another business owner. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's a problem when, when when people say, "Oh, we need this restaurant." You know what? Half the businesses in Toronto are restaurants. And now shoes when you go down stores. the sidewalk, now yeah, when you go down stores. the sidewalk, all you see is empty patios. Now you see shoe stores. They'll develop shoe stores on Queen Street. Plenty of them. Okay. Anyway, yeah. we, we we've been on Ward Eleven for a while, so let's go really quickly to the climate platform and continue the Ward Roundup that we were doing. Um, a lot of these are already in the Alliance platform. Uh, we would talk a lot about free transit. Subsidizing bikes is something I said spontaneously in answer to a questionnaire, and I've stuck to it. Subsidize bikes, and uh, we all know subways, subways, subways. I mean, surface rail, I don't really care which. Um, this was, uh, you know, Miguel and I both got the e-scooter endorsement or whatever, um, the red tape on e-bikes. Make it legal. Yeah. Oh, did, yeah. It's, you know, it's red it should have been done a long time ago. Uh, democratically review new developments. Um, that's from the Alliance platform. Um, cancel Highway 413, also from the Alliance platform. Tax hard services, that's a Diane Sachs idea. Um, I, I, one of the things I said at the outset of all this is that it, everyone has to copy each other's homework. So that's what we're doing here. Um, <laughs> everyone copy my homework. Um, expand green spaces. That's Alliance and, well, it's definitely in the Alliance platform. Solar panels on city spaces. I actually, that's, I've heard that a couple of different places. Uh, this is in Sachs's platform, a gas hookup freeze. She uh, says it in a more wordy way. Um, now the green, well, green, the Sachs policy is to ban single-use plastics but you'll recall that i'm an anti-authoritarian and a total ban strikes me as like a bit much so i was like well maybe we should just put a tax um lower speed limits near homes i think that's in both platforms actually and uh district heating is an old green party hobby horse i can't argue with i hear this from a couple different greens about we really need more district heating cooling uh sounds like they know what they're talking about huh. and uh what is that, is, what is that? oh Oh, well, maybe we should do a whole thing on it, but basically like, oh, do, is it like, like piping water through pipes to adjust the temperature of buildings, but it works on a whole neighborhood. So it's, like, know, it's often more energy efficient. What about a high ceiling tax? A what? A high ceiling tax. A high ceiling, mean, that's interesting. Well, yeah, it takes, it takes more resources to build a building with higher ceilings. Some of these condos, they all got high floors. You know, it takes a lot more energy to heat them. You know, so it should be an environmental tax or, or should it be a building tax? Should it be a property tax? But you know, uh, you, you might you might curb some of this extravagance. That's interesting. I was on there this morning and Josh Matlow's email address was not there. Oh yeah, they logged into the My Candidate Info or whatever and updated it. I've made a few changes to mine, trying to just playing with the SEO. Like, I don't know how many clicks really come through the site. It's probably all just us. I'm on there. Like I like I probably told all you guys, I'm on this site every single yeah. day. So by so folks, um, although the alliance has not made it official, I'm pretty sure that we'll end up endorsing Matt Lau. And that's what I told Steve Pakin when I saw him on St. George Street, because he was like he's, he's like, nice finally thinking about the election. And I was like, Oh, you're Matt Lowe's war. Like, well, I'll certainly endorse Matt Lowe because the Matt Lowe for what? Mayor? No, no, for his current race for the oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. You yeah. ran to Steve Pinkin? What's your I name? love that guy. Steve Pinkin? I have sent so yeah. many messages. I've sent so many messages to uh, to the agenda and, and different TV shows and asking to let me come on and speak about ODSP. And they don't even return an email. Mm. Steve Pinkin, uh, good guy. But he's yeah. a great guy. Like, <laughs> he's smart. Yeah. Like, holy crap. He's in touch. So, Adam, who do you like for Ward 13? Well, our, our uh, colleague Miguel here, of course. He was <laughs> about to or two with the rest of us. I've heard. Yeah, I've I, heard I, no, I honestly Miguel. believe that electing someone who was arrested is good for police oversight. The alternative is having former cops, like in Tracy Cook's job and in John Burnside's job. We'll get to his ward in a moment. And, uh, you know, and, and Moist. And uh, uh, War 13 yeah. is, is someone who was arrested at Lamport 2 versus a former police officer, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Now, I, now, Carolyn Murphy did do a very good interview on your show, Matthew. So I, I would probably put her number two if I was doing a ranked ballot. Um, but uh, this, that's the situation. I, I don't think she's, but uh, someone pointed out to me that she's uh, also maybe more of like a business person, not like an anti police type candidate. So it's like, you know, I, I think the policing uh, is a more pressing probably, issue right now. Uh, uh, she's more uh, pro police. Uh, Who's this guy? <laughs> I, I don't know. I've heard about it. That's some guy got about up on that guy. I heard about this guy, man. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, like why did you? <laughs> Wally, uh, Wally, I think you should uh, reach out to me. Maybe we can do an interview and I'll squeeze you in before my vacation uh, so that no one interrupts me when I'm in North Carolina. Right. <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, we need to have more debates. And I think that's really what will get people to understand uh, I, I honestly was trying voting record I, I honestly was trying to get an interview with at least one person in every ward and I was not successful mm -hmm. um but uh, I, I mean I tried <laughs> well, just like we were successful in finding a candidate to run in every ward mm. last minute <laughs> what um, do you guys think of Dean folks Dave Ritchie Dave, <sighs> I'm leaning towards Dave Ritchie. I'm 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 abstaining uh, there, there's some, there's been some. Well, I have I think people, you know, the, the trouble with funding artists, the trouble with funding artists is if you fund a poor artist and you're going to fund them for years, uh, you know, um, instead of them getting a job because they're no good at art, what's the point of it? <laughs> what about the crush can? <laughs> uh, can you go back to 15? Sheena Sharp has received endorsement of uh, some. Uh, I liked it. Yeah, Dave's good. More neighbors. He helped Sorry. that little guy. That little guy find his butt. Her, that little stand got stolen on CTV or 24. He helped the family find that the little boy is uh I don't know he's selling something. I saw he stole a scan or whatever. They they found it or whatever. I can't remember, but he's pretty good. I like him. Sheena the, Sharp. Sheena Sharp was at the climate change rally. I think oh. so. Uh, I mean, she has some. She has some. She's in the sort of like guy inside green type person. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I have to say, I, I, I don't know if I said it in this uh, meeting, but like um, any incumbent uh, other than Matlow or Perks is a no from me yeah. because it, they yeah. didn't vote so, for the no, judicial inquiry into the yeah. of violence, which I was personally injured and arrested. And, and absolutely, and, and, and especially this one because she was head of the TTC. Who was that, Jay Robinson? Yeah. yeah. Just smiling at me. Okay, so 16, I really want to know who's going to take on John Burnside because this, is my, this is my Nick villain. Pat except I did, he's I did, an incumbent. Yeah, that's my word. That's my word. I did an interview with really? Colin Mahovlich. I think you guys should check it out. Yeah. He's, he's, he knows, I also like him. Yeah. He knows no, his shit. Yeah. No. 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 Does he Nick know? Patches. I'm no. endorsing, I endorse Nick Patches. No. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I talked to him. I talked to him. There's his website. Well, okay, can you tell him to go up? up there? What's that? He's, he's been in the me. city for 30 years. He's worked in the city. Oh, that's why. He's, yeah, some of these people are like, you already know who I am. I'm not going to put anything here. No, no, no I just, <laughs> I didn't know he worked in the city. Well, I talked to him. No, 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 I didn't. You're calling him off, which has some good ideas. I like, uh, but John Burnside's got to go. He's, he promoted, he, he he's not even there. He, Got it. He's got to get, he, he works for the city know. manager's office, which, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they he, uh, gave him a job the moment he lost the last election. And he, can't, and he can't even talk properly to Adam Golding during an interview. <laughs> yeah, everybody looked at my interview with John Burnside in the Vic John Tory playlist. Mr. Mr. Tory Mr. Playlist Neutral. On YouTube. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, the, the first person I showed that video to called him a buffoon. Yeah, he's boring. Uh, 
Well, I talked to him again a year later when he came to the Clarence Square clearing, and uh, he was pretty hard to uh, get through to there, too, despite um, trying to speak his uh, bit more authoritarian language. But, uh, He's a cop? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I do not believe that the city manager's office should have any former police in it. Even no. if you were to double the police budget, you shouldn't put them into the city manager's office because you're supposed to have a layer above. If that layer above is small enough, it could be a fewer number of people and it could still regulate the thing below. But uh, the other day, it, when, when former police regulate police, no one regulates police. Okay. Okay. Well, I hope one of these people knows what they're doing. We're, we're saying what Colin and uh, like who, who, who's who's going to beat John Burnside? Uh, Nick Patches. No, no. I, uh, yeah. I like Nick. He's good. No, I think Colin. But also, this guy up here, Walter. Nick I talked to him. He's a good. He's got okay, a good well, let's have them on. Let's call them up and let's have a chat with them because we should boost them up. Um, maybe not. Okay. Any any other uh, names that you guys know? Uh, Walter. I talked to this guy, Walter Alvarez, right here. Very humble guy. Yeah, I like him. He's very humble. He's a very, I don't know if he's religious, but he's very humble. He talks, he's always complimentary. He appreciates a word, a compliment, and, you know, even criticism, he takes it. Uh, Hanny, he's not a cool guy. You see him, in, he's in governor. He's, you see the way he talks in governor. The president himself. And governor. They, they're shutting governor down, by the I way. I think the take against. Yeah, what happened with governor? I don't think he lives governor. in the riding, so he might be. Uh, Is he a parachute? Yeah, I think it's a parachute. Uh, Colin, I think. Uh, uh, well, better parachute than John Burnside, but. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> better, yeah, but. Okay, Colin, yeah, let's take a gander at Colin's page for like. Oh, right. Um, no, he's tagged uh, him to see if he could come to this. Maybe he'll make it next week. I think I think Tori's endorsing this guy. I don't know. I no, heard something he about this. No, no, he's, in, he's, he's, he's endorsing uh, Burnside. Burnside. Somebody's, somebody's, yeah. somebody's got this guy Sticking in the back the, the, the Labour's endorsing Stephen Kiesic. Kies. Yes, oh, really? Uh, Stephen. 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 Who's that guy? Stephen. Oh, this guy. Oh, he's a cop. Yeah, is he? he's a cop too. He's a cop. Yeah, he's a cop. Uh, I don't know why he's leaving. I can't even, even smell the cop off him right here. Just put him on the <laughs> give him a cop. <laughs> show. The gal too, man. See, <laughs> he's a cop, man. No like, way. why do you keep picking these cops? <laughs> well, well, I don't know. Why? I don't know you can't have one, but when there's this whole pattern of like former police running the city manager's office, it's like no way he's so very and heavy handed. Like, is yeah, that their training? Imagine if it was all like teachers or something, or like, I don't know, like nurses who like former nurses in the city manager's office, like like a million professions exist that would be better if that was the one that was predominantly like former people. I'd have to find an excuse to fire them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, Turn them into a can and put them on display. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. I like Walter and Walter? Nick Patrick. Yeah. And Patches. But Patches doesn't have a website, apparently. Or not yeah, website. he does. He does. He has oh, a okay. website. Okay, he's just not linked. He doesn't know how to link it. No, no, he hasn't put I asked him to put it up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're like, dude, if I'm endorsing you, can you link your site up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Adam, tell Corey to fix up his web, his tweet. He can't get on his web. We're just going to win this and get some housing built and get people homes and get friggin' and fight for people to have more money. He's a traditional Greek man, very family-oriented guy, down-earth okay, guy. We'll have, to, we'll have to send them a, all, all these folks a special invitation to uh, to help them out taking on John Burnside or something. Yeah. Send them all an invite. Send them all an invite to come to the protest on Wednesday. Oh, okay. you, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, see, yeah. how, see how much they care about people. Seventeen. If they care about uh, people. They'll come. Hmm. I think Daryl's the only one who has a shot at at uh, unseating Shelley. I think. Oh, that's funny. Daryl ran in my riding before, and he was like doing something. He was trying to make a what he called a party of independence. Like Can you show a picture like, of him. The concept. Um, Gru uh, doesn't mind Shelley Carroll, but she didn't vote for the judicial inquiry into encampment violence. So, like, what's with that? She didn't vote for what? She didn't vote for the judicial inquiry into the encampment violence. The oh, only, only Turks and Matlow among the incumbents running voted for that inquiry. Like, oh, that endorsing movie. Chris, Chris Boyce, Jelly Carroll. I think she's endorsing Chris. Hmm. Hmm. Well, good luck, Daryl. 
Shelly's not the worst person around. Uh, oh, I don't mind her. She's okay. She's been along too long. Now. She's been in there. She's a former a teacher, time. right? Uh, I can't remember. I, can't I get remember. that. I get that vibe from her. <laughs> um, I'm gonna announce my running. I think I got. I, I like her talk about numbskull notions. So she's like, I didn't do an ad hominem. I just said that was a numbskull notion. I was like, yeah. Billy Chang. She's the one. Uh, okay. Uh, any any opposition to that, folks? Well, Marcus O'Brien Fur is getting uh, endorsed by John Tory, so that's a turnoff. Yeah, for me. yeah, yeah. And his name's, his even name's though cool. he he did he did a great interview with me. I like the guy, but but like I said, it's a it's a turnoff if you're being okay, endorsed well, by Tory. I'm feeling a lot Tory. better about Lily here. I'm going to get a friend up there. Let's she, get uh, if you see if you read her web, she started this whole thing about the mothers. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Mothers, a whole mothers program. For uh, out of a single mothers, or it's, I can't remember. Just read her web. She's pretty good. She started way before she got into politics, but she's good. Okay. That's good. Yeah, nice, humble lady. Okay. Okay, and then uh, who's Daniel Lee? I never, never seen him. I know this guy, Daniel Lee. Oh, yeah, Mr. Withers. Forget it. <laughs> Mr. Hey, good luck, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> We're we're, we're, Bring back here. The we're we're worse than a sewing circle here on social. I know. Well, we'll just speak on it, we 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 promise a town hall, which is more of a stitch and bitch. But anyway, Brad Bradford. <laughs> What's up, um, Adam? That, Adam. Okay, okay, okay. Now we need to keep Phil. Okay, we need to talk about this. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Okay, Jenny Warden is the obvious pick. I was just telling people at Glen. Okay, Golden I birthday. knew this is we have coming. A, we have a okay. musician running. This is Rima. I'm gonna explain Rima, why. I more than almost anyone to the NDP. I have to explain why I did this. Okay. Brad Bradford is a hypocrite. He voted for a lot of people. I know that. He was too I dumb to understand that. why that's objectionable. And he came up to me like I was going to explain it to him. Honestly, he, he said, he said, oh, why are you chirping me on Twitter? He said, like, it must take a lot of your time. I'm like, honestly, it's one of like 10,000 things I do in a day. And he said, oh, you must have a lot of bandwidth. And I'm like, uh, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and he was like, so like, what's your issue with me? And I'm like, I tried to explain to him and I managed to summarize it. like, I just wouldn't vote for a law that I bring, it's, it's hypocritical. And like he seems surprised that that was an issue. So I can no, see what no, Tory no, likes let me ex- You want me to explain why I picked him? Not really, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not getting money at me. No, I want, you, I want you to stop it. Yeah. Huh? No, I picked Jenny the- Jenny Warden is the best, the Jenny Warden I think is- Jenny Warden is, is solid. Okay, I'm gonna put her website up. I am, this is my screen sharing. We're not even gonna talk about- Brad, The only thing we're gonna say about Brad Bradford is glug, glug, glug. Councillor Bradford, let's have a kegger in the park. They won't ticket us. We're white, bro. That's what I tweeted at him. That's what I compelled him to ask me at City Hall, why did I do that? I thought it was like a really simple joke, and he had to ask me to explain it. But anyway, Jenny, vote for Jenny Warden. I trust Rima, and the more I learn about Jenny Warden, I trust her too. And this is Rima's pick. And uh, okay, well, Rima's good. Rima's good. And uh, yeah, and um, you know, we um, we need more uh, musicians and people involved in the arts scene as well. What do you think of Frank Mara? Who's that? Who's that? Frank he, Mara? He's, he's, uh, he's attaching himself to Blake Acton. Oh, well, Jesus Christ. Oh, no, Blake Blake Acton is you got a picture? Matt, you already, you already learned your lesson with Blake Acton. The, the, yeah. old, the good thing. Yeah, so if I, I interrupt everyone for a moment, I want to make a, like a, a, a general simple point here. The good thing about Blake Acton is that authoritarians will vote for him instead of Tory. The good thing about Climate Hag is that anti-mandate people will vote for her instead of Tory. The good thing about Gill is that the left-wing people of all other of various descriptions will vote for him instead of Tory. You have to siphon off votes from Tory from every side of the political landscape. It's the only way that we hashtag evict John Tory, and we don't get there with political purity. We get there um, with everybody and well, simultaneous. Let me let, let me let me I, just I, jump in there for a second because I was having this conversation with my wife actually the other day. So. If, for example, if Tory gets 40% of the vote, but 60% of the vote goes to the other candidates, the problem is vote splitting comes into, um, it comes into play at some point. So uh, isn't that, isn't that, a, uh, that would be a problem that would still put John Tory in the mayor's chair, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, this is, this is- I'm going to drain you Jenny Warren's video because Phil needs to learn his lesson for embarrassing I like side well, Let me explain why I, I did this. So I have a reason. Yes, it's culture. <laughs> I love I love my, my I love okay, well, you guys, you guys watch it later. But honestly, Phil, what do you think? I, 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 I feel like we, we'll tweet about this, but like, 
please. Well, you won't let me explain. Um, yeah. I have a strategy, but you're not going to let me explain. Oh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> it's 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 honestly painful to hear, Phil. No, oh, come on, Adam. I, I'm, 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 I'm honest. I'm telling you the honest truth. You asked me if I want to hear it, and the answer is no, I don't particularly, because it's honestly painful to hear you say anything. Okay, nice. I'm going to tell you right now why. <laughs> I'm yeah, he, he, he guys volunteers who like him. Okay, well they sure okay. like they like the band. <laughs> I'm promoting Jenny Ward. You're not going to believe it, but I'm promoting Jenny Ward. You got it. So what happened? He okay, well, let me explain why I picked Brad Rat. I went down to talk to went down to connect canvas with the guy. Okay, Jenny Ward is the one for the ward. That's who I believe. Right? I'm strategizing. You know, strategizing. Right. Oh, hang on, the enemy camp. Well, I do everything literal style these days. No, oh. no, 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 no. There's a way. There is. I went down there for a reason. I'm not. I didn't go because I'm. I like the guy. Okay. I get nothing. You know. Okay. I know what he's saying. I know what he's But more importantly, where is Corey? He should be that here was, for this meeting. <laughs> that, that was Sarah's. That, that, I think that was Sarah's. Sarah's. Sarah's thing. You know about doing the interviews and stuff was to you know see what your ideas were, so she could take whatever good ideas you had and, and use them for her platform. Um, I haven't done an interview with her. Um, maybe we're good to, uh, to do one. I don't know, but we'll see what happens. I, I don't know because if you think you know, if you think that it's the right wing and stuff, you see, I want to do a campaign launch. But like I've been concentrating on this protest. Once this protest is over on the twenty eighth, I got to concentrate on running for mayor. I want to do a launch. I want who wants to help do a launch with me? If anybody wants to support me, hold on, hold on. Before you went too far, Adam, for Ward twenty, um, I endorsed. Philip Mills. Yeah, Philip Mills is yeah, also good. Oh, he's my Phillip. second choice. Yeah, I endorsed him too this morning or this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's my number two. Yeah. Who's your number one? Corey. Yeah, my colleague oh. Corey of the Social Alliance, yeah. one of the three yeah, like Corey too. who will definitely be inclined to uh, put a check on the cost. Yeah. Um, 21, Kiri could not make it today. Maybe we'll see him next week. He'll probably be at the rally tomorrow. He needs to put his site up here. Oh, no. Somebody Who's that? chide him tomorrow. And then uh, Kiri with his acorn background. Uh, the 22, what's the deal here? Yeah, 22 is uh, the Nick Nance is the incumbent, and there's oh, wow. not much the choice. Uh, I, I don't know anybody in this in this war. I, I, this guy. I did uh, it. Anthony? Okay, go ahead, Matt. I, I did an interview with Anthony Internacola. Um, he's a really good guy. He's a, a single dad. He's very dedicated and committed. And um, I mean, I haven't done this uh, th this debate yet, but I, I I did an interview with him. Anyone else? Like, I haven't I haven't well, wasn't able to reach out to anybody else. So I'm I'm interested to see what's going to happen in the debate. But yeah, I like Anthony. I talked to him on the phone briefly. He's for mental health. He's a big advocate for the Kennedy. Uh, yes. Don't know what goes on in Kennedy. Yeah. He's big yes. there. Uh, and he says there's nothing going on being fixed at, at Kennedy right now. The problem there is there's nothing being done. They just put him there and that's it. So he's a real advocate for mental health. Yes. But he's not, his, his website's not updated. It's the same he's thing. Got, he's got good animations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's cartoons. And oh, okay. I'm going to trip out to that later. Good info biz. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so uh, were there other remarks about Ward 22? No, I just had two months on Ward 22. Is that a coincidence or are there cousins related? No, 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 Nick no, is no, they're not, no, they're not. Antonio, really Antonio yeah. entered totally later, yeah. but I think he's trying to split up the Ward, trying to get under his skin or something. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, what's going on? Here? Jamal, I've yeah. already I've already endorsed Jamal Myers. Yeah, Jamal he's, Myers. A, he's a great guy. Yeah. I've met him too. He's great really guy. he's really you know what he's passionate and he's willing to work with people that don't sit mm -hmm. on the same uh, side of the political aisle. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. okay. Well, I'm glad everyone agrees. Uh, yeah. Twenty four. Uh, oh, Ainsley. I got to think Ainsley. Ainsley, he's a good guy, he, but he's an incumbent, Bella, right? Philip, Philip, Philip. I know. I, mean, yeah, I got nothing. I'm saying he's an incumbent. But no. I don't know if these other people. I don't know. Never he's he's oversight. People no, but Vivian, Vivian Karosha, Habi oh, Habiba. Oh, Habiba. Habiba Desai, I would, I would, uh, she's not 100% uh, uh, with us, but she yeah. has an interesting approach to politics. What's to start a fighting oh, school in her war? She's got a TikTok. Uh, she's get, serious. Get, get the kids off the streets. Well, that's good. 
I, I'm that's one of our things. If you want to get people. this uh, fighting school built for a while, and, you, know, you want to work with kids yeah. off the streets and get them in the, get in the, in the uh, I guess, uh, center or whatever. Okay, no, like, actual site that I see. No, she's got nothing, uh, not much on her. Hmm. I guess we should send her the questionnaire. Do we do that, Peter? Yeah, the, the length of, yeah. Do you know, Peter? Oh, we'll figure it out. Parker. Um, who's Vivian? Yeah, who's Vivian Parker? No, I don't need them. No. I don't know. I yeah. just don't go to Scarborough very much. I, it's almost like I'm not a parachute candidate. I live in my. I think it's a. I think it. Here. I think it's a a, a guy. Go, oh, yeah, it is a, a guy, guy named Vivian. The, Counselor satisfied seven thousand. <laughs> 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 Must be well served. <laughs> he's saying that we'll be like, whoa! Look at his. He's got a nice picture here with his two fingers up. He's like, this is like, he's got a hard sell vibe going on. Yeah, sounds like a preacher. Evangelist. You know, looks like an evangelist. That's what I say. I'm going to sell you my wood, brother. <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe we should chat with him too. Uh, he's got a Twitter, does he? Oops. Yeah, it looks. It sounds like we uh, downtowners are a bit lost in Scarborough, which is the same thing. Uh, in Gruels didn't know. Last word. Although I have something to say about one of the trustee races, but yeah. First one's an I, asshole. First one's a freaking that. asshole. No, Jacinta can correct them. Doesn't Scarborough have its own mayor? <laughs> Does Scarborough have its own counselors? Mayor? Yeah. Um, I got is. nothing. I got nothing to say about this ward. Yeah, M M McKelvey, I do. What are your but The first guy, first guy right there, biggest asshole. No, no. Ashton oh, Fernando. Yeah. I dealt with this guy back in June. No idea. I would go with. Jacinta. Matthew knows what I'm talking about. Ashton, yeah. I think, uh, conservative leaning. Ashton is an idiot. He's a, he's a sexual abuser. I'll put it that way. No. He took an innocent woman's mm -hmm. name no. and tweeted and put my name with her name, saying I'm in love with her. That's really? what kind of asshole he is. Wow. Can you send me that tweet so I have that record? That's fucking. I can send you all his tweets. He made it. He, uh, <laughs> well, maybe not all of them. The no, I can tell you a lot. He, he lied in everything he said. I, put him, I caught him in every lie, every message. You know, yeah, he's an idiot. QR code, socials. He blocked me too after a while, so what the heck. But I got okay, all well, tweets. what about these other two? Uh, Jacinta, Jacinta I, never, uh, an election. Jennifer, well, I guess we got to go with Jacinta then because uh, Jennifer didn't vote for the judicial inquiry. So You, um, sh you, you in should think about them. maybe sending her your uh, your questionnaire. Yeah. 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 Jacinta. Oh, no, I talked to her on the message. She was. Uh, she started talking to me on the message. She's having. He's harassing her too. too. Passion harassing this woman. Oh my God. Okay. Well, let's finish her. Oh yeah. He's, uh, he says uh, she, read, she messaged us or whatever. <laughs> she said, "You got any problems with this guy?" She said, "He's harassing me." Put before she started her Twitter. He's taking her ideas and he phones her. Her friends call her up and tell her to quit. Yeah. You're yeah, no good. Yeah. He, he told Adam, her to drop out. toxic people. Adam, can we go over the mayoral candidates? I know you you don't have a pick right now, but can we go over them? Oh, uh, let's end with that. I wanted to um, dig up one of these trustee races. Okay. Oh, okay, I don't need, but I don't call that. Uh, I don't I don't number. Let me oh, right, here we go. Ward five. Does anyone know any of these people? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't follow the, uh, I just see no. the faces and the pictures, that's it. No, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to meet with any of them. <laughs> I don't okay, mean so you you weren't able to meet with any of them. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, do you guys know the group A4A? No. Why don't you tell us? A4A stands for Autistics for Autistics. Um, the Socialist Alliance has one member in common with A4A, so we're loosely allied with them. Let's say, although the uh, that alliedness will become more apparent. Um, so. Um, a4A will be deciding, looking at this trustee race in particular, is what they told me on Twitter. Now, why would that be? Why would an autistic advocacy, advocacy organization be watching a school board trustee race? Why wouldn't they, like Matt wanted to do, move on to like the Christmas morning of the mayor talking about the mayor hall race? <laughs> well, this is not the, of the fun part, but listen to me very carefully here. Angela Brandt is the president of the Ontario Autism Coalition. <coughs> the Ontario Autism Coalition is a pro-ABA lobby group. ABA stands for Applied Behavior Analysis. 
and it is the equivalent of conversion therapy <laughs> for autism. It oh. was invented by the same guy. In conversion part. therapy? Yes. Oh. The, the <laughs> ONDP's <laughs> disability... Right? Hold on, this is a complicated story. That's really the, bad. The, o, the ONDP's disability committee declared it to be child abuse, but the yeah. NDP continued to support it, which they confirmed for me in an email. Um, yeah. Because they disagreed with Joel Harden, the disability critic, he prevented the committee from meeting during COVID. Um, and he was uh, you know, on the side of the ABA lobby. Um, I um, luckily heard from Merritt Stiles at an event two days ago that Joel Harden is not running for the leadership. He was. And there was uh, there were some internal complaints about him. And if you listen to uh, Blueprints of Disruption, Jess McLean's show, there was an episode called Autistic Resistance. And it will give you an idea of why Angela Brandt should not win this trustee race, even though it does not mention her, I believe. Um, she is the president of a pro ABA lobby group, which oh is why God. A4A wants to endorse someone against her, I believe is what they were tweeting at me. And I'm glad to hear that because I don't really know who these other trustees are. And uh, I think somebody asked me about it, maybe just because I like, guess this even this is kind of a large race for a trustee race, right? Yeah. It, 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 Oh, that, Adam, sorry, Adam, you just explain what the conversion thing is again for, yes. me, for them. Well, yeah, so the, the short answer is listen to this podcast and people who know way more about it will explain it to you. Okay. Um, but, and, and, all, and all that stuff that, that happened internally, because there's a lot of stuff that in this show that in NDP internal politics, but um, the, what, what your, your question was, was what, Philip? That, oh, just to what you said about uh, conversion therapy. What the heck was that? What are you converting an autistic conversion person? Therapy in the, so Coast, say, conversion therapy in the case of homosexuality is punishing someone for acting gay. Well, I know, I know, but the, why they put it autistic for? What does that mean? What does the what autistic have to do with conversion? I know no. about the homosexual thing. Yeah, they're trying to turn around being autistic. They, they want to say that they can cure autism by by yeah. by, by behavioral change. Changing the by, behavior. That's, that's a bunch of bull. That's, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, to answer your question simply, just the, here's a simple analogy. You can punish someone for acting gay. You can punish them for acting autistic. They yeah, both cause PTSD and they are both unethical. Um, yeah. By the way, uh, there is a tweet that I will link. Oh yeah, so this this podcast is required listening, especially for this trustee yeah, race. Me, but, but, yeah, and, and, and hold on here. A4A has this tweet where they leak an internal memo. The shape of the war. Um, look at this. Instead this is an internal memo with fake like data for MPP. Shape? No, no, no. Or just oh, include so this shape as like somewhere. Yeah. Where's that? This is all phony, phony leak data, right? Is emphasizing that it's Word 2. Who's, who's talking? I sorry, know. I didn't realize I was muted. Oh, okay. Is it, sorry, um, it's a bit chaotic. But anyway, th this tweet. This is one tweet uh, among many, but look at this tweet because this shows that the the, the ABA law industry um, internally sent fake data to MPPs, and that data said, "Oh yeah, the majority of autistic adults uh, think ABA was good for them," when the actual no. number is two percent, two percent, not the majority. The majority have PTSD from this industry which is another wing of authoritarianism. You know, there were many wings of authoritarianism mm -hmm. under Tory, you know, uh, dispensary raids, some, some aspects of maybe of COVID measures and definitely the encampment evictions. Well, this is authoritarian education. You know, I'm an anarchist educator, anarchist panel lessons. This is the opposite of uh, freedom of the way I envision in education. Um, some of these kids get 40 hour weeks of that kind of, uh, you know, um, punishment. And it's not, a, it's not healthy, so. Um, we have, so we have to figure out who is going to be against um, Angela Brandt. Mm -hmm. That is what I wa want to talk about the trustee race. So um, I wanted to bring all of your attention to all that. And by the way, um, you know, the ABA lobby is, you know, one of the one of the reasons I'm not with the NDP currently um, at, with Central. And uh, they are they wreaked havoc on that party. And uh, they used to lobby the conservatives. Where, oh, yeah, where did we get here? They used to lobby the conservatives, and now they lobby the NDP, and they are dragging the NDP in an authoritarian direction. And there is a civil war in the NDP right now between the authoritarian left and the grassroots left. 
And you can see that play out in all of the other episodes of Blueprints of Disruption, like the new demo chat Twitter spaces. I called I called um, Joel Harden out many times on ableism for disability and what he was calling for money and stuff. It was like, uh, and you know, he, you know, every time I met him, it, it, he he's like, he, he, he's acting like he never met me before. <laughs> you know, how, how do you freaking forget me? Come on. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's really good. You know, I, I was like, I know, like three times he did it to me at different places at Queens Park and at Oys and, and somewhere else he did it. You know, you're like, what the frig, man? You know, he's the guy that retired. Well, what he you retired. That episode? Is that the guy who retired, Joe Harden? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. And Tracy Cook took over, right? Pardon? Is that Tracy Cook took over his position? What? No, you're thinking of Chris no, Murray. No, no, no. Oh, Chris Murray. Sorry, Chris Murray. Yeah, Not yeah. Joe Harden. No, Joel Harden's in the provincial party. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in like the NDP, but yeah. So anyway, um, the, uh, I I am far less informed than the people in that podcast episode. Uh, I getting a lot of what I say from them. Listen to Blueprints of Disruption, and uh, look at the leaked memo from A4A. And A4A is looking at who they would nominate against Angela Brandt. I I gather they're doing the same thing we're doing right now. We're all sort of in the same place in the news cycle or whatever. But okay, so we want to talk about mayor races. <laughs> Yeah, Phil, we have two mayoral yeah. candidates right here. Is that you guys? I mean, we're really gonna do this, okay? I You're gonna put us on the spot. I mean, on, our, well, somebody asked about this, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I can't even put them all on screen. Hey, if you ever see any memes or anything about me out there, let me know and send me whatever. Because you know what? Uh, I don't. I'm not seeing nothing. Okay, I so, the, in the, in so the star. I, I just want to put out there for for you guys who don't know, I probably did more interviews with more candidates running for mayor than anybody else, and I'm comfortable saying that. Um, so, uh, I, I'd love to hear what you guys have to think. Okay. I, I think the mayor, the, the, it's, to me, it's a hard, difficult thing because uh, a lot of the candidates like Philip and Isabella here and uh, uh, some of the other ones, like I think they, they have like good ideas. Like Isabella is very strong. And, uh, so, 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 for the, so for the mayoral debate, I asked a question that relates to the first name on that list. And that is if Blake Acton wins, he wants to bring back carding as a tool for the police to use. Yeah. So uh, he's, he's definitely okay. a loser. Um, uh, <laughs> loser. I wouldn't move from just based on that. I think <laughs> Consanti might try to run on that two year resurrecting carding. And uh, we're definitely, I'm definitely against that. I'm against carding. Yeah. That's racist. Yeah. yeah. And then I did a, a wonderful interview with uh, Chloe Brown. Yeah. Um, she's very knowledgeable. And it, she says that it all comes down to planning. Poor planning produces poor results. Well, yeah, but she doesn't yeah. hit, she doesn't hit spots on ODSP or homelessness and how the social services. But, 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 but Phil, ODSP is a provincial issue. We're dealing with municipal yeah, politics. No yeah, problem. but you know, but but but, but it's it, you know what? It, 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 it is a municipal issue when you have ODSP and OW clients sleeping on the streets. And I don't want ODSP and OW clients fixed on the streets. And on Wednesday, I'm going to tell them that as the future mayor of Toronto, I don't want to see homeless people sleeping on my streets, and I want them to fix ODSP and OW. And I'm going to use those words as the future mayor of Toronto. Because I'm gonna, you know what? Because John Tory had eight years and he's never once said that ODSP and OW is on their clients and that he didn't want them sleeping on their streets. And he could have done that at any given time and over the last eight years. So I, I would nothing. do that. I would leave protests. From, I would lead protests from City Hall to Queens Park to get the, the money demanded. You know, I put petitions of that there in, in the community center. You know, there's many things I would do as the mayor that that would you know would, would, same with the provincial and the federal government with housing with housing is federal with with with, with money it's provincial same with raising that the, the minimum wage the minimum wage is a joke in toronto yeah uh, you know, she won't touch social security she won't touch social in doug ford's back pocket i'm not in doug ford's yeah. back pocket i'm doug ford's enemy no i yeah. got nothing against i got nothing against chloe but she's just she's all business she's all Thing, you know, her background, like her, I, look, I looked at her platform compared to all of us. Like she won't touch. 
I got a list of 13, 14 social services, including child prostitution, a whole bunch of stuff. She won't touch it, just like all the other ones. They won't touch it. You know, she won't comment on it. I've asked her about that. I got nothing against her. I think she's great. I like her her platform. It's all, it's all business. It's all strategized, but it's not detailed. It's all strategized. There's nothing in between. That's what's missing, right? So one, one thing I got going is I got I got a lot of people that know me because of my advocacy. And, you know, um, a lot of people when I see on the street, lots of people, you know, raise their hand up like their fist or whatever, or I'll vote for you. I'm going to vote for you. You know what I mean? People I don't know or never seen, never talked to. You know what I mean? Just as I'm going by. Um, people are fed up with John Tory. And, you know, people have seen me on the news and, and different blurbs here and there. So they know I fight for people. Gee, that's what so I think I have. A, I think I do have a fair shot. What I, what I need to do is try to get I, I, when I after I launch my campaign. After the protest, I'm gonna to try to convince other mayoral candidates to, you know, maybe drop their drop their running if they want to, if they really want to see change. Because we all got to get, you know, one or two candidates to run against John Tory. Because 30 candidates against John Tory just ain't gonna cut it. But half of them are missing. They're not even so, on the thing. They're not. Even, they're not. But who's actually gonna do the fighting? I, I mean, I if I give it up to somebody else, I, I, I can guarantee nobody else is gonna fight like I do. So that's the thing. So I don't want to give up because I know I would fight. I would block streets. I would do whatever it takes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't I, care. I, you know, I'm not going to fight for it. I'm not going to fight by by the rules that have kept us in poverty and kept us in this situation. And 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 you know what? The status quo is not where we're at. The status quo is, is why the reason we got homelessness is the reason that we got a housing shortage is the reason that there's no there's no fixer upper homes for the middle class because of the status quo. I agree. So I, I, not, not for the status quo stuff, you know what I mean? And then this is where we need some some, some mayors to things and whatever. I, I, I want to do a launch, but I need help to do a launch. And I want to do it maybe on the first Isabella, or something. Hey, Isabella, have you, seen, have you seen John Tory's platform for his, his agenda for the housing? What do you think of it? I haven't seen it yet. I've been you busy with the, the protests and stuff, putting up flyers and stuff. Because you know what? There's no we don't get volunteers to even help with the, with doing that. You know what I mean? I got a couple of people lately, but you know what I mean. It's like at the last minute, you know. Um, so, but you know, it's like I've been fighting at this for four years. You know, trying to get heard for four years. It's hard. You know, but I am starting to be heard, and people are starting to notice me. So I think I do got a shot. Yeah, I don't know what the what the, they said in the star yet. I haven't seen the article. I got the paper. I'll, I'll scan and send you a copy of it. Yeah, yeah. We'll just take a picture I and mean, just share. It. Just send the picture. No, it's got all right up the whole thing about you there, a little. And uh, what did you guys think of uh, Robert Hatton? He was at the debate, but I haven't. Before then, I hadn't ever spoke with him. He's Tory. He's for Tory. That guy. That's why. That's what I think. You know. Yeah. He's just a, he's just, cause he kept, he kept, well, he kept saying uh, Tracy Cook's an honorable lady. That's a bunch of bull. <laughs> Jesus. Well, you know, well, yeah. I know Tracy Cook. Like I told you before, I know the family well. She's not an honorable lady. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, she's giving her the benefit of the doubt. She knows what she's doing. Like he, why is he mm -hmm. talking like that? You know, he said, first of all, I don't know Tracy Cook. And then he said, assume that she's an honorable lady. I said, well, uh, first I had experience. I know what she's like, you know, that's mm -hmm. the first time she's got caught doing something. She's done many things before that. Believe me. You know, mm. I know her brother. I I know the family. Believe me, she's not fire chasing. First thing as mayor candidate, get her out of there. You know. Well, that that's one of the questions. That's why I asked you that guys uh, that she, question. She be in there. You know, anybody, it's like, it's like, anybody that's like that it's like housing in Toronto. You know, uh, or like Toronto City uh, Community Housing, charging uh, one hundred and thirty nine dollars for people on ODSP and OW. You know, exactly. which is ridiculous when the province allows three ninety or and, and uh, what is it now? Uh, it's not four ninety. What is it? Five twenty two or something? And you know, the, like, and you know, the, the, the Bank of Montreal, my contact, the Bank of Montreal says nobody knows this. All those refugees from Ukraine that came over, right? They get a free Mastercard for a year credit. I tell you what. Why don't anybody owe you to speak at that? Or anybody on the property? Oh, I don't think they get that. that. I think that's a myth. No, I know that for a fact. It's, uh, I talked yeah. the lady that I talked my my the my bank of Montreal lady. She showed Adam, me the paperwork. Adam, I have a question for you. Um, so I've heard a rumor. I can't remember where I heard it from. I'm not. I'm not protecting the person. I just. I can't remember because I speak to so many people. That after, if John Tory wins the mayor's chair uh, this year. 
um, in two years, he's going to retire. And apparently at that point, uh, the city manager would take over until a new mayor is um, elected. Ooh. And that, that would be Tracy Cook. Is that correct or incorrect? This is the first I'm hearing of it, but it would certainly make this question even more relevant. Uh, even though uh, what St. Pierre said, I had, uh, well, he said some stupid things about this, but um, just for our viewers, I want to read two things I put up here about Tracy Cook, and I need to, like, actually refine this petition, so if anybody wants to, like, revise this text, that'd be great. I feel like as the petition creator, I just want to, like, cull text from other sources and just put it, you know, just be an aggregator and just separate the roles. Maybe that's, like, too much separation of function, but anyway, um, just paranoid about, like, you know, government bias or whatever. <laughs> okay, so there's a quote from uh, from Pastor Doug quoting, I think, the, the uh, no, this is a quote directly from Doug uh, of Sanctuary TO. Toronto Deputy City Manager took responsibility for this entire issue at the last council mm -hmm. meeting. Is there any good reason at all that council should not ask for her resignation immediately for misleading them and taking steps to skirt clear rules? So you can get more detail on that. And then um, I'm just going to do this quickly. Um, this is straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, quote, quote. Uh, anything related to enforcement is not subject to council or councillors, unquote, says Cook, saying people upset with encampment eviction should, should spare councillors and, quote, unquote, point their ire at her. Well, OK, unquote, let's do it. And then um, th that was that came uh, from, you know, graphic Matt follows the, the council really closely. And this is just some stuff about the evictions, like the, the, the conference we did outside of Tory's condo. Actually, I'll put that in the main chat. Speaking of Evic John Tory, and uh, and um, the Evic John Tory playlist, which I think I already linked to in the, this event description. But anyway, I put up more because someone, I think it was uh, Philip Mills, who asked me for more, which is fair enough. And I did uh, put it in my own words here, not in the petition. I, I was saying in our twenty four seven chat, like, hey, uh, sign this, whatever. And Isabella thumbs it up. And then this is what Philip said. He said, actually, if you have some information, I could use it by Prudy Crazy Cook. I know she has something to do with the encampment sweeps last year, which that in itself should be disqualifying, but I don't know what her role was. And I guess clarification of her role wouldn't make her any less helpful. And uh, this is what I said. I said, Burnside was under Cook, was under Murray, was under Tory. For those events, the zero encampments motion came from Holy Day. The links in the petition are very important, as is all of the general footage in the Evict John Tory playlist. Uh, this was one of my answers to the Stars Boat Compass uh, questions. Um, quote, all of the candidates of the socialsalliance.ca are committed to defunding by 50% along with a number of specific reforms. You can also see my personal recommendations for radical police reform at blog.admolding.ca. You can also find the song at that place. If Ford can cut council in half, we can cut the cops in half. The price tag for ongoing encampment enforcement is approaching 50 million, the last I heard. Police spending should go exclusively towards reducing violence. Sleeping in a park is not a violent crime. One measure of the effectiveness of police spending is its effect on response time. Encampment enforcement could only have impaired response time by wasting funds, fueling the control freak fantasies of the likes of Team Tory, including Mayor John, Chris Murray, Tracy Cook, and John Burnside, all of whom are authoritarians who need to go. Fire Tracy Cook. Thank God Murray is already stepping down. Other than him, these are all former cops working for the city manager. No wonder we manage our city with such a heavy hand. And this is another response I gave to the star. I wonder if they'll print any of this, right? <laughs> this is why I was like, when are they actually going to come up with the vote comments? Are they stalling at this point? Because this is what I said. And I, and I said, uh, I was one of over 30 activists arrested on the scene at Lamport 2, the violent mass eviction of the Lamport State in the camp. At Lamport 1, it was a mere attempt the city had made before being fought off by activists and before passing a quote unquote zero encampments motion, along with a unanimous motion to take a quote unquote human rights approach to encampments conveniently passing over the idea that housing is a human right and then violently clearing three large encampments, Trinity, Alexandra, and Lamport II, all to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. I was there all three days after the motion and the scene was always horrific. People who had five objects to their name now had nothing. A young girl's, girl's arm was broken by the police. I met a professor a few moments after police had given her a concussion. As I explained on my blog, the city manager's office gave those of the moral compass no option but to object, and the police had no option but to follow through, so your city manager's office could have predicted what ensued, except they forgot that people who have a moral compass still exist in this city. Dozens of people were arrested, directly harmed, ticketed, or charged at these three violent mass evictions, which ran contrary to the will of the people, in that we had just had a unanimous vote to take a quote-unquote human rights approach. 
The indirect farm harm falls onto tens of thousands of Torontonians, and it was enacted by none other than John Tory, Chris Murray stepping down, Tracy Cook needs to be fired, John Burnside, don't vote for him, and Stephen Holyday, vote him out, zero in cameras was his motion. The psychic harm goes further, and this city will be healing for a century. If you want to know what really happened that day, look up the hashtag evict John Tory playlist on YouTube and send me any videos I might be missing from this archive of events. The truth is what you should base your vote on. Watch all of it. And by the way, the library would not let me print the words or publish the words evict John Tory to refer to this playlist, which is an archive of something like a library would have, like an archive of history. Um, I wanted to mention it on the library's website. I was not allowed. So anyway, that's what I wanted to say about Tracy Cook and uh, you, can read, you can read it yourself. It wouldn't have to print if what? Huh. Well, the library will. I did. Yeah. Think well, I think the library will do it. They have I will. I will say that when I asked this question at the debate, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the only uh, candidate that said that they wouldn't fire them, other than Robert Hatton, was uh, was KJ. Oh yeah, KJ. Yeah. Did anybody do the mayoral candidate thing for for was it global? No, that was a while back. Yeah, they did uh, like a write-up. Yeah, well, did, did you ever hear? Did you ever hear about the write-up? Did you ever see the write-up? No, you had to go on their. You got to go on their website to find it. Somebody sent it to me. I couldn't find it. I, I have. Yeah, I. I Is that the know. young guy? The guy that did the. Uh, um, he's a. I think he's an independent reporter. I don't know. He's on. He's had his own website on Global. But I saw I, your. I have, look, I have to look through my emails to find his name. Yeah, I got. I saw your your right up there, and I saw mine as well. But I didn't. I couldn't find it. Somebody sent it to me. The link for the. If you go on the global website, you type, you got to know the guy's name. Look for your. Uh, and then there's you know. also the architect one. Have they? Have you seen a public? I haven't done that, that one yet. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. What am I going to answer? Put a building there. I don't know. <laughs> Put a can over there. <laughs> I'm, I'll do that next. I'll do that one after. The, uh, the library put theirs up, there, apparently, and the uh, TTC is doing theirs. Right? Yeah, you're going to have to go into a library somewhere and see if I see it. But no, half, I the went there. Are, half the libraries aren't even wheelchair accessible, I noticed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to walk to read, buddy. <laughs> you gotta, or, you gotta, or you got to hunt for the fucking way in. One yeah, person yeah, didn't yeah. ask us a question. Phil didn't ask the Alliance a question. Mm -hmm. What's that? And there's three people who came who are not technically in the alliance, and each of them asked a question except for you, Philip. I'm not mistaken. Oh, can I ask a question for the alliance? I think you're obliged to. Okay, can I can ask anything. If, okay, if elected mayor, my question is: once I establish a social alliance committee in the city of Toronto, I want to know what's the first thing. What's the first two things we can do as a new committee for the people? I guess I'm going to go well, first. Let me ask a question. I'm asking you. You got to yeah, stop I, the bleeding. I mean, I think Gil yeah. put it that way, that you have to stop the bleeding before you stop the healing. Okay. Before you, stop, before you start the healing. No, my question is, what's the first three things you would do besides bleeding? I think it's... Direct uh, cash. Yeah. Cash and I think housing, a plan to uh, uh, rapid build up of housing. Okay. Next. And the yeah. last one? Yeah, cash, housing, and what's what's the third one? Question answer. Well, you have to stop the authoritarianism. We're spending all this money mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. being control freaks that we could be spending on basic needs. That's the basic like budgetary. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, I don't want to say paradox. It's not that that complicated. It's just a mistake that we have yeah. in, the, in the city and uh, throughout the world probably that we we spend all our money on control instead of on like like the bottom line. like 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 having a really hierarchical society is not like part of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I don't think we need the horses. I don't think I we think need the, the horses, the war yeah. horses. I don't the think third, we need the horses. Yeah. But your uh, third answer, third answer is about the authority one. That's the best one I like out of the bunch. That's, that's good. You well, get that authority. Where it start, well, honestly, my, my old platform, it just starts with give Khalil the key to the city. That's symbolic. It kind of does nothing, but that sets the tone for everything else. Yeah. yeah you got to do that. You know, unless you change that, which you just said the authority of structure, the whole manipulative of, Way it's going on right now. It's been going on for like how many years? Unless you get that, you gotta get you gotta get one old system out of there and then put a new one in there that works actually for the people. Mm -hmm. Which would you just said authoritative, right? Authoritic. Can you say the word? But that's right there. We just talked about earlier before Isabel came on about the whole uh, you know controlling and capitalism. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's, you gotta okay, get so that. Out. On, on that note, if I may, it let's do for a while to find of coming works. events because this has been really great. But we need more people. Oh.
So, mm -hmm. and we have got a month to do it. So let's, let's, what's the next couple of days are as follows. Monday, we have a rally at 5.30 at Young and Dundas. It is the rally to evict John Tory. Pardon me, the rally to hashtag evict John Tory. As I mentioned earlier, I, I put the title, Barry put all the body text, which is why they don't really match. <laughs> That's where we'll be. Five thirty okay. minutes tomorrow, uh, and then in the evening, as always, I go personally in Ward Eleven to open my Mondays at the Painted Lady, where I perform with John Tory. Tuesdays in Ward Eleven, there's a full day of stuff. There is Socialist Tuesdays at Film Cafe at three, where I'm screening Dream Tower about the the hippie building Rochdale College, where my mother lived when they raided the entire building in 1975. Um, then I do a Kensington Brewery open mic in Bampot. Uh, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays is the event that I host, but this Wednesday is starting early because I'm having my campaign launch. And uh, my wife Spectralize is the feature artist and she's not always there early. She's taking time off work. So it's a bit more of a, a full event and I'm gonna be sending out invitations to like community associations and whatever. So um, everybody come to the mix on Wednesday if you can make it. And Isabella was mentioning you have an event earlier on the Wednesday. So tell everyone about that. The event on Wednesday? Yeah, we're, we're having the uh, protest at uh, Jarvis and Wellesley uh, from two till four. Uh, we're going to block the intersection. Uh, the protest is called Get Real ODSPOW. Um, only 5% of people on OW on welfare actually live in subsidized housing and only 9% of people on disability on ODSP actually live in subsidized housing, which is down from 7% of OW clients and 12% uh, of ODSP clients living in subsidized housing three years ago. So there's less people on ODSP and OW living in subsidized housing now than there was three years ago. That's why you're seeing more in the parks and stuff. Um, you know, uh, part of the problem is a lot of some of the, some of the tenants, you know, the, the the city likes to see the visible homeless because they, they only actually represent a very small number. There's there's half a million ODSP clients. So the, the 10,000 homeless people, there's 5,000 homeless that are staying in shelters, 5,000 on the streets. You know, John Troy likes that, you know, because that, that way the public sees these ones acting out and acting bad. Then, you know, the public is so less, um, they, they, and they, so the, the, the politicians, they, they put down uh, the, the homeless people to encourage people not to care about them so that they don't have to do anything to help them. You know what I mean? They don't want the public to stand up and say, listen, you guys got to fix this. You know, they, they don't want to do it. It costs more money. You know, the, when, when they're keeping people in shelters, John Tory is paying $6,000 a month. Um, you know, miss municipal money, and Doug Ford is getting off the hook because he's only paying you know a, a, a street allowance for the uh, OW o o or ODSP. You know, for the ones that are on the street, the ones that are in the shelter, they get money from um, their their shelter allowance goes into the shelter. Some the, the, some of the ones who sign over their check. Um, when I was staying in the shelters, you, you stayed there for three months. Um, you you had to sign your check over if you're going to want to continue to stay there. I heard now it's down to a month or uh, um, some cases right away before they even let you in, they say that you're gonna have to, you have to sign a paper saying that your, your check comes here and your, 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 your shelter deposit comes here automatically or whatever. So, but you know, it's cheaper that way. And it, it, you know, it's, we gotta get people out of shelters. You know, shelters, we gotta trim down the number of shelters. We shouldn't have to have this many shelters. You know, if shelters actually worked and were a stepping stone to housing them, they'd be empty by now. They just don't work, you know. Um, the public doesn't know half of this stuff. When you're when we hand out ODSP and OW flyers for a protest, people don't even know what that stands for. They don't even understand what a disability benefit is. They don't understand the term Ontario works. Do you have to tell them it's welfare? You know. Um, so there's there's so much going on. That's why we need the public's attention. How do we get the public's attention? We need more media. How do we get more media? We need more people on the street. So, you know, um, we try to encourage everybody to come. You know, I, we should get a lot more numbers this time because more people are interested and more people are, are fed up. But, you know, people have told us lots of times that they're coming, but then they chicken out at the last minute because they're afraid of getting their benefits cut. You know, they're afraid of the police harassing them. They're afraid of the, the you know, um, you know, many have PTSD and trauma issues. And so, you know, we just add to their trauma. So... Definitely. This is why we need more able-bodied people to come out. You know, this is why we need, you know, uh, people to, to encourage able-bodied people. You know, I worked at many jobs before I became disabled and went on benefits. 
You know, anybody can become disabled. So people in public ain't being told that. The public ain't being told that ODSP is a safety net. We got to keep that in place. Because once you become disabled and your benefit, your, your workman's comp, and they cut you off of that, and then you use up your savings, you end up on ODSP if you're a young person. You know, if you're, if you're you know, it depends on how, when, you, then when you're a senior and you go on CPP, it's even worse. You lose, your, you, you, lose, you lose more benefits when you drop from ODSP to CPP. This isn't right either. That'll be my next fight down the road. You got the media so, coming up well. to you, Isabel? Pardon me? You got the media coming up for the event? Um, I've invited them. I've tagged them many times on, on, on social media, on Twitter and stuff. Please, please go ahead and invite them. You know, the more people are invited, the more after they're, they're, they're going to come. And, you know, tell them that you're a mayoral candidate. You're going to this protest and, you know, you want to come. You know, whatever, make it your make it your campaign launch, whatever you want. <laughs> you <know? laughs> hey, did you, you hear that? Uh... Did your mayor Tories hired a uh, what's your face Balo for his campaign manager for housing? Did you hear about that? Yeah. What do you think about that? Hey, eh? Balo, well, back again and yeah, at the workshop. You know. Yeah. You know. Um. Yeah. I don't know. So, but anyways, it's two till four at uh, Wellesley and, and Jarvis. We're going to shut the intersection down. That's right across from the ODSP office on the corner. So um, they will hear the brunt of us. You know, there's a there's a, a collegiate there on the other corner. Um, you know, uh, maybe they uh, they will find out what democracy looks like. You know, because they'll hear us and be looking Hi, out the window. Hi, Barb. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, is that Miguel? Is that your wife? Uh, my girlfriend. Yeah. Hi, Barb. Oh, um, Miguel, when's your your um, candidates to be? Oh. All can all candidates to be. Yeah, yeah, it's on Tuesday. Where's that at? Uh, at the YMCA uh, here in um, Havistan. I mean, um, <clears throat> in, in Ward Thirteen, uh, near the um, distillery district. It's Where? The YMCA. Distillery. Oh, distillery. Okay. Oh, it's Oh, the Gooderman area. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's why it's got bad energy. Right. We're packed with events <laughs> till Wednesday, and I, and we'll be on the air again before Wednesday here at Municipal Mayhem, which uh, is probably going to be the name. This is like probably going to be the Socialist Town Hall on Municipal Mayhem. I don't know which which video goes to which channel. By the way, everyone, keep your copies. Upload them everywhere. Use any brand you want. Doesn't matter. Adam, where's your launch at on Wednesday? Where is that? Sorry. Where's your launch at on Wednesday, your campaign launch? Oh, at where the you... mix, at the former B side. It's at the open mic that I host every Wednesday, but we're oh, starting I don't know where that, earlier. I don't know where that is. Where's that? It's at 669 College in Little Italy. It's a great spot. Uh, the Assun brothers have run all sorts of venues since the 80s in Toronto, and they were based out of New York before that. Really great uh, group of three brothers that I work with there, small oh. business proprietors. Oh. And uh, they give me huge flexibility to do basically whatever I want there. And I'm like, okay, there's like a political event happening on there. Like, oh, okay. okay so if I, come, <laughs> if, I come by, if I come by subway, where do I get off at? At uh, college and what? Where, what are the you know what? The Ossington bus is terrible. Okay. Um, so get off at uh, Bathurst and then take yeah. the Bathurst car down to college and walk. Okay. So it's okay, it's down there. Okay. Yeah, the Ossington, the Ossington bus sucks. <laughs> uh, but yeah we're gonna start uh, i'm gonna be there at five on wednesday i'm normally there at like seven so it's gonna be like because elizabeth's at she just finished four o'clock there's only much time to get over there yeah well, I mean, i'm on bike myself so i can go i man i've been to so many events in one day a couple of days ago i'm getting getting better at that <laughs> you got a lot of energy <laughs> oh, well, well we'll see <laughs> i think i think i think i'm counting on uh, being able to take a break in about a month but and, so and, I, think uh, I'll be, I, I think I'll be able to come to your launch. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'll, 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 I'll have the energy. I just have to bring an launch or a brace with me or something. And for uh, the, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what we'll do on the front patio versus the back and, and what's going to be inside because there will be folks uh, dining. So we might end up on the patio. Uh, I am in the back patio, I'm, I, but I think we can open up the back gate there and just fill. I got my wheelchair in there anyway. Yeah, it's it, it's something they have. They only bought that venue recently, and there's a lot of work it needs done. Actually, it's not accessible. Well, the front no, patio is accessible, accessible, and I've I've chilled with Isabella there during the event, which is actually where I spend most of my time because I'm usually smoking weed on the front patio. Um, and and we have a speaker out there too, so like it's not like you can't hear their music on the yeah. front patio, but it is starting to get a little cold. So I guess I guess yeah. Isabella, make sure you bundle up, and I'll I'll make sure to spend some of my time with them, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's it's semi accessible, unfortunately, but you know it's better than nothing. 
Is the college bus and, 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 and Isabella, if we can solve that problem, we could probably do a launch for you in a couple of weeks because that space before the open mic is always free. Um, yeah. So I can do other political events in that basically five to eight time slot on a Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, it's just wide open. And I don't have to incur any additional costs to use that space. And that's like yeah. that's like three hours of like a Thank you. spot, right? So like, and well, if I'm, anybody I'm, has I'm, ideas, I just, because because anything, literally anything that's programmed in that spot, people will stick around for my music event. So it just, it just helps yeah. help if people can. Yeah, well, I'd like to do that on maybe the first or something. What's, what's, what, what day is the first? Anybody got a calendar? What's a good day for a lunch? Is it should be a weekday or a weekday? Well, Wednesday is when I have access to that space? Okay, Wednesday, Wednesday. So that would be what it would be a Wednesday five to eight. So what what there uh, be a, I mean there'd be a music act at eight. So that would be what the fourth or fifth? The fifth, yeah. The fifth? Okay, all right. All right, yeah. We'll do it for the fifth then. Now, keeping in mind, you got to look at what the weather's like, because because um, I don't know if uh, um, you, I, what what you you would need them to install a ramp, basically, wouldn't you? Yeah. How much does that actually cost? You know what? There's there is um, there is somebody that does does provide ramps to businesses that uh, wheelchair accessible ramps. I don't know what it's called though. I seen the ramp though the other oh. day that had the mark on it. Let's figure but, it out um, then. Okay, Isabel, I'll message you. We'll figure this out. Because right. we, we you and I talk with this, and then you and I have just been so busy, we both just never really got around to the next, until this moment, like, what is the next thought about that? Because we were there, and we were talking about, oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Honestly, they, they, they could use a bit of our help figuring that out, because navigating these city plans and things, there's no one, no one from the city is going to come and tell them, oh, here's how you do it. You know what the city comes and tells them? I was, oh, I think I was really get, this, get this, get this, get this. I was hosting the event. And a city bylaw officer shows up in the door with their weird uniform. And I'm just like, that's not a cop. What is that? It's like when you see, like, you think you see a rabbit, but it's actually a hare. <laughs> like, ah. and, and like, and I thought, this is it. We're finally going to get a noise complaint because we, we don't really, because even though the speaker's out in the street, the neighborhood like is a good relationship right now, which is great. Um, and, and I thought, oh shit, is this finally, is this finally the day that we get a noise complaint and our whole vibe has to change or whatever? <laughs> and nope, they came to complain about their own shit. They said that the patio was too far out in the street. And the owner said, well, that's where the city put it. And they said, well, you still have to move it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, so well, they, and so they made the owners fix the city's mistake, but where the patio was put. I thought like, wow, it's just like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. They, they were, when was that? When did they show up? Because, because I complained about that, about patios taking up two thirds of the sidewalks just recently. Because I know it's that on the damp part. Because it people. make hard for you to get by, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and every time you come up to it, especially when there's a, like on a, when, on a nice day, there's always a bottleneck. So people can't get by either way. You know, there's the patios, then there's the grocery stores with their, their produce coming way out. There's, I can hardly get my wheelchair through a lot of spaces. You know what I mean? There's just, just barely enough room. So like, there's, there's got to be some kind of control on this. At least we're halfway there. At least the front patio. I, I was thinking that patios maybe should be only on the sidewalks and they should be portable, that they shouldn't be permanent. They shouldn't be attached to the pavement. So when the winter and the fall and what, when they're, they're not using it, they're not there. So if it snows or whatever, the snowplow can go through without having to have a problem. You know what I mean? And I don't know why the city is putting friggin' telephone poles on sidewalks uh, when there's there's retaining walls that are 18 inches uh, away from the. Uh, I can I can barely get my wheelchair through. There's no way you can get a snowplow through there. So how is that? I see this on Broadview here. You know, I mean, this is recent work that they're doing. There's there's just something wrong with whoever's doing the planning. Like, take over some of the person's property and put the telephone pole. Leave the sidewalks bare. If there's no room, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, the city planners should be riding around in, in wheelchairs. I would give them wheelchairs with sensors on them that would show like, hey, at the end of the day, like in a computer log, okay, where's the bad spots? Okay, now go over and fix these spots. You know what I mean? So, you know, like that, yeah, and crew of those going around. Hey, Isabel, what do you guys do? You take a stick like Indiana Jones with your wheelchair. When you see those 
produce stands sticking up with your stick, <laughs> stick, stick, stick. Well, like any then just knock them all down when you're going to the wheelchair. Oh. <laughs> no, I took pictures. I got pictures, but I, I was waiting for a bit. And play, and play, the, play the Indiana Jones music. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's well, hard, on that note, get, um, hard enough to get people to like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, on that note, we're at about two hours and 40 minutes. We should probably call it for this uh, iteration, and we should all do this next Sunday. Uh, Sunday's uh, Socialist Town hey, Hall on Zoom. Do you have any guest speakers? You know, <laughs> well, yeah, no, well, uh, yeah, well, well, now that we uh, know we're doing this, we can all send out our invites or whatever, and this could be a huge Zoom meeting, and we could talk about all sorts of stuff uh, every week. Uh, after the election um, regardless of who wins so well, we've got to keep the ideas flowing and uh keep all the the um the homework uh being copied <laughs> hey Adam, we didn't talk, we didn't you know, talk you, much about your you, know, you wouldn't download the solutions to the world's problems would you what's that yeah you know like you wouldn't uh, <laughs> you know like you wouldn't download a car would you you know that old anti-piracy mm. are you gonna say phil anytime you didn't talk much about your platforms for yeah. us you know yeah. He's okay, let's go to that. Okay, okay. Let me, let me. I was, I wasn't really in pitch mode when we were looking at it. So let me. Um, we were like, Isabella had just arrived, and we were getting, getting, getting resynced. So let me bring it up again, um, because yeah, there's some new stuff. Um, I guess I'll take like two minutes. I didn't talk about much about your, your platform. Yeah, I, I, I talked about this to the UT Students Union, so you can look it up there, in that video. But uh, let's see here, uh, screen share again. Oh, the interview we had the lady Chinese. Lady, I, I watched it. Yeah, yeah that, watched well, that was about the arts platform. At the yeah, end. I, I watched it. Was good. Mm. Or, or wait, am I confusing my interviews? Anyway, let's look at it here. Um, okay, so what are we talking about? Climate or arts? Well, we're talking about the arts. Oh, oh, actually, I remember Matt wasn't here when I asked him this question. Matt, um, did I actually show you this when we did the interview? Have you actually not even seen page one of this? Because these are all oh. old, but maybe you haven't seen them. Uh, no, I, I don't think I. I don't think okay. Let's I, see what okay. Let's get Matt's live react to the Evict John Tory platform. This is historic noise. Oops, no, do I need to zoom that in? Okay, yeah, look at your, your municipal food subsidy. I was talking, I was thinking about yeah. Uh, did you guys see my platform? I did in visual. Uh, I didn't. I didn't look at your detailed one yet, Phil. Okay, but I like what you have with the food subsidy. That's like the. We should do a, an episode of a deep dive on your detailed platform, actually. Okay, yeah, because what you a lot of stuff you talk about in the social lives, it's in my platform. Matt, did you see it? Uh, I, I'm reading it now. Yeah, he's reading it uh, now. No. Yeah, yeah. He's got his reading okay. face on. <laughs> okay. You can tell he has great powers of concentration. Yeah, his eyes he, get he smaller. He managed to keep reading through that inane banter that we were engaged in. <laughs> yeah, uh, Adam, yeah, it's something we haven't uh, touched on. Um, I think we we also need to have a tech open source. Uh, tech oh, platform. yeah, I've been going to Civic Tech TO. I can flesh yeah. that out more, yeah. Yeah. Please. Oh, Adam, it, uh, Sarah's looking for a moderator for our uh, debate you know, coming up. She's looking you know, one thing about, one thing about, about food banks, that nobody ever talks about is that you know some me, uh, medium income families use them um, in order so that their 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 kids could have Hewitt pack uh, who is it Hewitt uh, Hewitt packet uh, um, laptops uh, and uh, you know top of the line um, anyway, Adam, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, um, iPhones and and whatnot you know instead of having regular phones and they they just use the food banks because they can. Mm. Um, who was trying to say something? I didn't. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I, I, this yeah. is their problem because they have what, one what, more what's that, Isabella? food banks. No, it's, it's yeah, okay. let, let, let you're, 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 yeah you're right, Isabella, but we're trying to wrap it up quickly on this. Thing. Uh, I just quickly, uh, when you say uh, make police forces have more democracy at work, yeah, I'm just wondering what that means because if you're if you're saying uh, if you're if the point sure, is yeah. to get to get rid of the unions, no, um, uh. uh Matthew, I suggest you do like a podcast binge of Richard Wolf. I think you'd really like it. And uh, it would give you an idea of where some of us crazy leftists are coming from. He's a socialist economist. I first uh, got acquainted with his work through his talk at Google. You know, like there's the authors of Google series. And so everyone gives their good talk, I guess, when they go to Google. <laughs> and uh, 
you know, he's he had like a conventional economics education and then had to teach himself all of the radical left wing economics. And, you know, it's um, at any rate, um, the point that he makes a lot is that the Cold War did not test worker management. The Cold War tested central planning versus markets. And uh, we do need markets. Voting systems, in fact, are markets. It's a it's a space. It's not an either or. But what we um, could have is a lot more worker management. We could have more worker managed cooperatives where you have a worker council meeting every week and you vote on what gets done. That's different than having a union. In the case of a worker cooperative, the democracy is kind of baked in. In the US, Richard Wolf has called it democracy at work. He doesn't want to call it socialism because that's a dirty word. Democracy is a sacred word in America. So it makes the point quite well, hey, if democracy is so great, why don't you have any of it at work? Um, and the answer is, well, you should have more of it. Now, there's some other things that come up. You can watch um, Michael Albert on Destiny's show talking about how, I think it's in South America, some worker cooperatives um, was, um, uh, was that Miguel? Um, uh, yes. Some worker, worker cooperatives there, um, they, they got the vote, so to speak, at work, but people still didn't turn out to vote. They didn't, they would vote to make the meeting optional and the, the engagement participation was is the same things that we have with that, this civic democracy. And they were saying you have to actually rebalance jobs so that each job involves someone in different parts of the organization. So they actually have like an informed perspective to be able to vote meaningfully and then they're going to want to vote because they have that perspective. And so it actually involves not just giving workers the vote, but making jobs less specialized so that people can be kind of a whole citizen as a part of the organization. And that would be, that's very important for police because you don't want them kind of dissociated and turned off on autopilot when they're doing something so dangerous and delicate. And um, now there's a big, big caveat though, which is that even though you should be able to have the police have some kind of vote on what they're doing, like I think police probably would have voted to not do the encampment clearings. If they had, what do you have, but even, um, even they, like, uh, first, you have to put the you have to have the people's veto power in place first. You need citizen oversight boards that can veto what the police say yes to. Uh, Uvalde. You can think of the school Uvalde. What they would have had a vote. Those those officers in there, they would have went in probably and attacked that gunman. But the the officer in charge said, "Don't no, hold them back." Right? You might be right. And Uvalde, right? Yeah, I see what you mean. So that's that's where if they had a vote and they said, "No, you know, we're going to override you." Yeah, Twenty million dollars. So, um, <laughs> you know what? One thing that, that uh, you guys haven't touched on and stuff, you know. know. Is renewable? You know, did you did you hear about they want to mine? Did you hear about they want to mine the oceans now? You know, um, we gotta we gotta talk more about environmental issues and stuff. You know, um, and if you're gonna talk about uh, production and business, it's it's all gotta be tied together. And you know, I I think we gotta start encouraging uh, Canada that um, we want to see products uh, imported and made in Canada be at least ninety or ninety five percent recyclable to stop the you know importing stuff from the dollar stores and it all ends up in landfill sites here and we're paying for garbage from other countries and half of it's got toxic chemicals in it you know that um, these other countries are, are shipping out their toxic chemicals in products to other countries so they don't have to have stored in their countries so um Matt, should i go to the next <laughs> yeah. page and then you know what when you're, yeah, when, you're plating, when you're plating objects when you're plating objects with gold and you know mineral minerals that are rare earth minerals and you're exploiting the earth and, and raping it and, and destroying not just the earth. Now they want to destroy the ocean, you know, you know, to do more mining, you know, to what to, to plate jewelry, then the, the plating falls off it. I got enough jewelry here that the plating's off of it, and now it looks like crap. So what do you do with it? You, there's nowhere I can go get it replated. You know, and if I did get it replated, it's, you know it's gonna wear off again. So then what good is it? You know, we we need people to talk about this kind of stuff as well, right? So there's something that's going to be going forward. You, you, we we got to start talking about how things are produced and mm -hmm. businesses. If your business, if your business is going to start producing things that are 95 percent uh, recyclable, we're going to support you. Here's the thing okay. that I, that I would add to. I, I think that your police reform is good. Um, I don't know that I necessarily agree with the defund the police, and I'll explain why. You see, just I it. prefer. I, I, I would I would say that police need to be held accountable um, and that all stems from changing the language in the contracts. I'm sure you've heard me say this before on the episodes, the language that exists inside the Toronto police contracts. 
there's a jobs for life clause. I'm almost certain that there is the same one that Rob Ford got taken out of the city workers when he was mayor. There's one there. And if you take that out and replace it with a clause of the nature of a three strikes and you're out, meaning it's easier to start mm. to start firing these police officers for for whatever the uh, the offense is, if it's uh, excessive force or harassment or fill in the blank um, I like, I like, but I like but I, I i really i really i really i really like your police reform i just think uh maybe including uh, changing the language that exists in the contract and that's 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 that's, that's a police thing but it's also uh it's also citywide i'm sure there's contracts in every file that the city controls where if you change the language it can change um it can change things across and change the your employees' behavior. Yeah, but you make them more the, aware the problem of that the problem that management will use that in, as an excuse even when when there's nothing wrong with the behavior to to get rid of workers. So, I yeah. mean, that's a that's a slippery slope. Uh, hmm. It's uh, um, well, you know, the city the city being they, forced to use union workers all the time is another problem. You know, if yeah. we wanted to build housing and stuff and get a lot of it done cheap. You know, it'd be better to hire private contractors because union wages are are, are so high. You know, right. like they're, they're we're we're tying our hands by making it so that we can only hire union workers. I gotta um, wait another year to use the LRT now. I gotta wait another year. Jeez. You know, um, you know, this is the right? thing. Or this is a thing. You know, all all these these contracts take forever. You know what? Like like I watched them fix Victoria Park. They changed the stairway, a staircase. And 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 it put in some turnstiles at the end of the of, of, of the platform on one side, and is it, um, is it, is it a, work, is that? a couple of elevators. But the way they did it, you couldn't even use the elevator to take you know somebody that was living in Teesdale, because you have to take your 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 bundle buggy ever through the te through the turnstile. I tried one time, my bundle buggy got stuck stuck in there, <laughs> and it, and I, I had to go to a point when I came back that they, they they had it waiting for me. You know, because I couldn't get it out. You know what I mean? It was stuck in there. So you couldn't get a stroller through there. You certainly couldn't get a wheelchair through there. So they, they spent all this money and all this time, and it wasn't even properly wheelchair or accessible for anybody with a stroller. So, you know, there's nobody holding accountable for this. It's like Toronto Housing. They hire a vendor. Hold on a second. Though, I think Adam's Adam reacting now, eh? Adam. 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 Sorry. I just wanted to point out the reason that that I say uh, changing the language in the contract is if we're successful and we can hold a judicial inquiry into the mass police violence, what's going to happen? Because the police, as it stands right now, I don't believe the police officers would get fired because of the union and union would save them. But if we change the language inside the contracts, then we, we might be able to push forward and fire at, at least the most egregious offenders um, you realize, you realize it does help psychologically to hear a judge say it was wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 a lot of the injury is psychological. Like you know, I come I from cognitive science into politics, and I, I, understand. And I look at like economics primarily, you know, behavioral economics, et cetera, et cetera. Like, and, and it's it's easy to underestimate that dimension of all of this. It's a, and, and that's also before the clearings ever even happened. When I was getting so upset about Tory's language and going after Khalil and his language about it, and it was. It was so. Um, um, it was the opposite of sanity provoking. Let's say it was maddening, and um, uh, you know, it, it was just so corrosive psychologically to make a public example of someone being punished for helping. You know what? It, it, that, right. It, that, that 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 was what really set me off about this guy, John Tory. I'm like, you yeah. are publicly punishing someone for helping because you're afraid of insurance right. companies. Yeah, I you agree know, with you, that. You, you know, should be standing up to to those companies because you know you could have done that. Yeah, how come he doesn't go down there with hell? The chief should be down at the park seeing all what he's doing, right? He's sitting in his office where everybody does dirty work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, you can, well, he's you can really Napoleon the rising down there with, you know, implementing all the stuff like the system office nice, nice and pretty and all. Yeah. You know? there, 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 should be a way, there should be a way to fire them because, you know, it's the same thing. Like uh, I had an ODSP worker and my McEwen house I, worker and, and I, she lied to us twice and, and we caught her in the lies. And we had proof of it. And we went and we seen the manager. And I asked for my worker to be changed. But she should have been fired. Yeah, but you know what? The, the manager promised to change my worker. But he didn't. It, she was my worker up until I just moved recently. 
And the reason I guess it got changed is because I moved into seniors housing or something. <laughs> so, you know, the, but it, it's... Of Zoom you know, that, she's still working there. If she lied to me and my worker twice and we caught her in lies, how many other ODSP clients has she lied to? And how many other, uh, other social workers has she lied to over the years? And you know what? They can't get rid of her. There's a problem. All right, folks, you know? that's a wrap. So I'll see you all next week. Way, right? Um, okay. thank, thank you all for coming to Socialist Thanks. Town Hall. Thank you. And feel free to organize similar events yourself. I'll be sure to attend. I can only organize so many events, but uh, we all got to advertise this. Uh, upload your recordings everywhere you can upload recordings. I'll Audio, see you. Video, et cetera. I'll see you Friday, um, Adam. Uh, remind me what's, oh, for the debate. Yes. Perfect. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't thought past Wednesday in a couple of days. But anyway. <laughs> but we'll as I said, we'll be on the air again before Wednesday, and we'll so well. I think we'll do the calendar like I feel like like make three days at a time. Sounds good. Yeah. Just okay, uh, keep, definitely keep, keep me apprised. Uh, send me the uh, email. Remind me because I got a million things going 100%. through my head, and I don't want to forget. One hundred percent. Just get my email lists together. Okay, that's a wrap. See you later, folks. Sign up. Right. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Matt.